This episode brought to you by Echo Base Search and Rescue. Because if you want to wait around all day for the Rebel Snowspeeders to show up, then I'll see you in hell. May the fourth be with you, nerds. We're watching Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, and you are listening to Miscast Commentary. You're listening to Miscast Commentary. Where two guys have seen way too many movies and have way too much time on their hands. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. All now here's your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Hey everybody, may the fourth be with you. Welcome to Miss Cast Commentary. I am Joe Finley. I'm Todd. Tebow, the force is with me, Murray. Ooh, I like that. Well done. Uh, we... Have got another one for you. Two episodes in a row that are movies. Like we, how do you receive such gifts? That was I didn't say that right. Huh? Gifts. <laughs> Gift is that's more than one. Gift. Yeah, that's called English. You did great. I'm sending you gifts. Gift is as gift is 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 as vestes. Gifts of as. If you're giving estevez as a gift, that's what that is. That's gift is, that, is this the birth of Festivus? Mm-hmm. It was really just a speech impediment and a stroke <laughs> yeah, happening at right. the same time. While looking at an Emilio Estevez picture. Nice. It causes seizures all the time. Constantly. That's why I can't watch Rated X anymore. Mm-hmm. Great movie, though, actually. Go watch Rated X. If Rated you X. It's, um, it was a straight-to-video thing. I think it was, well, it was like a, um, like a, one of the, what's the, the Did festival. Did he direct it? It was a festival film that he directed. Charlie Sheen was in it. It was about the two brothers uh, oh. who made like mainstream porn. I got you. Yeah, and then the one killed the other and stuff like He's that. He's got a new one coming out too with a bunch of people in it where they're at, they hold up the bus to, or the library. Oh, really? It looks good. Good. He's a decent director, man. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, Bobby was, was good. good. I like, liked yeah. it a lot. I thought Demi Moore and Sharon Stone scenes were great. Yeah, I don't remember it very well. It's been a long time. Yeah, because they're women. And you, to. you took them out of your mind on purpose. You said, I'm not even watching this scene because there's two women in it. Well, it's because they were women who were once strippers and leg spreaders and neither one of them were doing either of that. <laughs> I know. You know what the hell? That was the thing where one girl's like, I showed my pussy, and the other one said, me too. <laughs> and then they high-fived. <laughs> With their pussies. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's really high flobbity too. Oh, yeah. Because they weren't the youngest when that movie came it out. Sounds like two cloned Zoidbergs making out. Ooh, that is as close as we get to getting us back on track is saying Zoidberg. Boom. Boom. We're watching Star Wars. You want it, guys? <laughs> nah. I hope that everyone- Bobby. <laughs> What the fuck? May the fourth be with you. Let's watch it. Yeah. Let's watch a presidential hopeful get murdered. I hope the fourth is with you because we're not watching Star Wars. <laughs> that would have been a nice twist. Fuck. That's a good April Fool's episode. What April Fool's? We're going to watch Star Wars. Ha ha. No. We're watching Bobby. April. No, we just say we're watching something that April Fool's. We just watch something else. Oh, that'll get him. We're going <laughs> to piss him right off, eh? Both They're of them. They're like, I got the whole thing synced up with the shit. I know. It took me 26 minutes. But you never even say it. We just keep watching and then I just start spouting out things. I'm like, what are they talking about? What? Is this the same movie? Sean Connery's they won't not even in this notice. movie. They won't even notice. I know. We talk so much sauce, they won't even come out. Let's go. <laughs> Talking sauce. Do this. All right. Let us feel it todd's gonna get in a backpack and sit on my back and then i'm gonna press play play now uh the old fox i do here we go i do miss this number two in our line of star wars extravaganzas so we're gonna decide the order we're gonna do them so we're obviously doing the first trilogy first do we do the prequels next Ugh. i say we do them Oh God! We have, we'll have on that. We have a plenty to say. I'm sure. I think that we should do a screening of the all prequels in a row in a truck stop bathroom, mm. and the moment that he goes, "No," we blow our fucking brains out. <laughs> no, I was thinking you do it at a truck stop glory hole, and then just it's the same no. place. <laughs> yeah, it's a big cock thrust and sway into. <laughs> it's weird, and and then we. And Why then we, am I standing next to the whole? No, <laughs> and, and then the next episode we talk about it's like it's weird you didn't show up he's like weird i was sucking some dude's dick you didn't show up and it's like oh you sucked my dick do it do this what? oh okay and then press strikes back it is a dark time for the rebellion although the death star had been has been destroyed imperial troops have driven the rebel forces from the hidden base and pursued them across the galaxy evading the dreaded imperial star fleet a group of freedom fighters led by 
Luke Skywalker has established a new secret base on the remote ice world of Hoth. I'll do the next one. Is there another one? Yeah, there's another one. This is all you. The evil Lord Darth Vader, obsessed with finding young Skywalker, has dispatched thousands of remote probes. Oh, gee, I hear you. Into the far reaches of my spaces. Is, is, is. <clears throat> so while we have a minute before it goes to the actual next scene, so Irvin Kirshner directed this. He actually refused it originally. He is um, George Lucas's old film teacher. And that's why he got offered the role. He needed somebody he could really Good trust. Good call. So he, he went, needed somebody that he could let do all the work and then him take all the fucking well, credit and money. Well, actually, there's a lot to that, too. We'll get into that more. But uh, Irvin Kirshner, his first directing job was also his first writing job. He did a stakeout on Dope Street. He did it for Roger Corman. Oh, my God. Yeah. But he's also directed A Fine Madness with Sean Connery, The Flim Flan Man with George C. Scott. The Flim Flan um, Man. The not Bond Bond movie, Never Say Never Again. Oh, sweet. The one. Uh, well, Thunderball. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Thunderball and Never Say Never Again were both based <clears throat> on Thunderball. Right. And because. Those are the ones the only... they came out at the same time in the studio. Yes. Did one, but then the Broccoli's ne- did another one or something. Never, or... never Say Never Again went up against um, uh, Octopussy and Octopussy won. Right. So, that was Sean Connery still, right? Sean Connery was, no, Never Say Never Again was Sean Connery. And Roger Moore? But yeah, uh, Roger Moore was Octopussy. Ah. So that was, because that, Sean, that was Sean Connery's big fuck you to the Broccoli's was going and doing somebody else's. James Bond. Because yeah, the other company owned only one James Bond story, right. which was Thunderball. And they made two movies out of it and they both sucked. Beautiful. But, uh, Way to go, guys. Yeah. But he goes down as being the, the only man to direct a uh, Star Wars and a Bond movie, if, you, oh. if you're willing to count yeah, it. Yeah, I movie. would. So, Fuck, man had Bond in it. Yeah. He's the only American. He was to legally it. allowed to say, I'm James Bond. Then fair, it's a Bond movie. Fair enough. He was the only American to do a Bond movie. Look at this well. thing. That thing's really there, man. Yeah. He also directed RoboCop 2, which was weird. RoboCop 2 is pretty good. Yeah. He played Zebedee in The Last Cri- uh, Temptation of Christ. He did a little bit of acting. Zebedee boo? Zebedee. And he was Wasn't a, he Jesus' right hand man? He, he used there. to go partying together. Yeah, he was like. He's his, like, Jesus, my man, Zebedee, what's up? He was his roadie or some shit. Uh, the original script for this was written by a sci fi writer named Lee Brackett. Uh, she was, she died of cancer while like after she submitted the script where it was, it wasn't quite done yet. And then they went through it and they scrapped the entire script and hired Lawrence Kasdan. Jeez. But, um, her, her script was weird though. Her script actually, some things that happened in this could not have happened like ever because her script would have ruined all of it. We'll go over it as the movie goes though. You better uh, trust this guy. Where were they filming? Is this a soundstage or what? Um, oh my God. Some of it is soundstage, but any spots where you just see flat out snow. A they're, bumble. They're in Finland or Norway. Oh, just, you know, when you see this bumble, bumble. in, uh, in uh, Rudolph the Red Rose, yeah. he's not nearly this brutal. But you get out there and you see a real bumble. He wanted to be though, because holy shit. This, um, I, love, I like the idea of the Tauntauns, that they got something kind of native to the... To little, the area. little jinky there, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, the real guys look awesome still, though, right? Look at these guys. Uh, there's, looks... Look at there's Wally. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty yeah, much. Yeah, holy I, shit. I know. Uh, what's really interesting, apparently, they said that a lot of extras were children in this because they wanted the hangar to look that much bigger. Child so for, labor. So they basically just dressed them up like adults and had them not facing the screen. That's awesome. Uh, this is the only, uh, at, at least for the original movies, this was the only full sized uh, Millennium Falcon ever made. Really? Uh, because all the other ones, they just needed to see like the first the like, side like, or a yeah. piece or so, the, right? So this one, they actually- Or the little the, ramp, you know, the little thing that comes down. And yeah. The, uh, so this one, they they actually did make the whole one. Oh, years. there she is. God bless her soul. She looks so much older. In so this she time. died in, in between these, right? What? Of no. us watching them. No, she died in 2016. No, but so. we, we we haven't, you know what I mean? Yeah, like no. we watched one, she died. Yeah, but no, she, she died. She, did no. she die before we watched A New Hope yeah. there? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah, well, she did. I actually thought that I'm myself. Not the fact but, guy. No, but actually, I thought the same thing, and I looked it up, but because it seemed like it was so much sooner. But no uh, way. Yeah, she well because she died before completion of filming of the Last Jedi. Look at them all. There's so right. many. De- they're all dead now. Right. Well, either in real life or or you know. Yeah. You, we can't say anything about what happens later because in about 12 years from now we'll reach those new ones and uh, <laughs> it'll ruin it for someone. Probably. <laughs> you know, they just they pissed you off on somebody. They get like. Like, you know, you're talking about the usual suspects now and somebody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I haven't seen that yet. Don't ruin it. It's like, dude, it's been like 20 fucking years. You're not seeing it. I'm going to say 
How long is the, what's the time limit? I say for a movie one year, I say one month for a TV show. Agreed. A TV show episode. I dig it. So. I dig that. So I'm, I'm okay. Those are the new rules, people. Yeah. So just get used to them. Martial law. So he mentions that thing about the bounty hunter and Orb Mandel. I've never heard it, but they actually did a radio play that covers what happened at Orb Mandel. They do a lot of those. I just read something today. This is just the headline that said one of these novels that have come out recently took, uh, uh, really explained a lot more that happened in the last Jedi or something. Yeah. This world is very huge and there's lots of things too much to read. Yeah. I was, street. I haven't read any of them yet, but I'd really like to, I love, they, they fill it out all, they fill the worlds out a lot more. They explain yeah. things and yeah, I like that. They really ex- start to uh, genuinely explore their relationship in this one. Cause the other one, you get those little moments of like jealousy or whatever with the kiss or these things, but it's just like this one, like really kind of lays into it. I couldn't imagine I like why they would pick this world to be uh to come to to hide out it's like let's go to the coldest place so everything is difficult to do yes can't run our equipment we well you know you don't want you know this I, is the only place to be where they're not going to find you i suppose so those crazy nazi pricks mm-hmm. so as of 2008 this was number three on empire's uh, empire magazine's 500 best movies of all did time. they name it after this movie what's that did they name their magazine after this probably movie? not but i wonder if that did affect if the name did affect it or not but this was the biggest thing about this was george lucas financed this movie himself Boom. And this was, he wanted to become... You want 100% of the profits? Well, he want, he wanted to A, maintain his rights, and B, he wanted to make himself independent from Hollywood. And he had a lot of problems... Oh, yeah, he sure did. Well, he had a lot of problems <laughs> during this one. No, but he had a lot of problems during this one because, um, like, to the point where they were so mad. Like, he did, he want, they still wanted him to have the credits in the first part of the movie because it was still rules to have... That's... Uh, um, Oh, credits before and yeah, after? Yeah, you had to have credits Ugh, before and after. Remember Total Recall? Cause, Jesus. Because yeah, that's a union rule. I'm right? like, oh my God. Not a lot of movies do that now. Yeah. Did they change that or something? Uh, no, well, no, because now what you got to do, you know how they'll have like the animated sequence or whatever that has all the stars' names and then it, they have the scroll that has everybody right. again? That's how you get around it. You have to show it twice. And then you just said, now you can show it twice as long as it's anywhere, right? But um, so they let him not have the credits in the first one because they figured it was going to bomb. And then this one was like, oh, it's going to be a big deal. They're like, no, you can't do that again. So the time. studio themselves were like, oh, God, this is terrible. Yeah. So, that, no, not the studio. The unions came up, came after and them. Like, and this they're is going to do terrible. First they tr- oh, the, oh, yeah, the first time around. But now this time. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah they tried to get it blocked from release because they didn't, he didn't do what he said. Then they find both uh, George Lucas and Irving Kirshner. As hey, a com- was what? that new? Not since 1996. Okay, but uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was in that first. That was uh, that was added. Yeah, in the re-release, this was added because originally you only saw a couple of like shots. Yes, like now now with his full body shots. Look at this guy. He looks awesome. Yeah, they did do a. You see this guy at Comic Con? That'd be a sweet costume. Yeah, it's not worth the effort. Oh, you uh, don't even know. I do. What if the boobs are cut out and it's some hot girl? Now we're talking. A hot. What's what's his name? Sexy sexy wampa. Sexy wampa. You tell me you didn't see a little sexy lady wampa out there, you'd be digging it? A lady wampa, yeah. I'm they not, ain't asexual, man. I'm not gay for wampa. I'm straight for wampa. <laughs> I'm gay for tauntaun. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't hey, tell the sex of those things. Is that, what, is that what a tauntaun's doing, wanting you about wampas? Wampa, wampa. Yep. I All think right, you're absolutely boom. correct, actually. Right, I did it. <laughs> so what really surprised me, this movie actually was in limited release when it came out. And the reason it was in limited release, they released it in 70 millimeter. Ooh. Like uh, Django or it's foreshadowing or like, right or there. Whatever. You see that guy just yeah. got his arm taken off. There you go. You we, think that's karma? Karma's a bitch, Luke. Karma is a bitch. Big time bitch. Yeah, you're not even a true Jedi. That you're thing was coming lightsaber. over to help this, you down. No, we got to stop everything for a second. This is right outside of not this long shot, but that other shot was right outside of the hotel in Finland where they were staying. They had a massive snowstorm that should have shut down filming, but instead, Irvin Kirshner just sent just sent uh, Mark Hamill out there. The cameraman shot from inside the lobby of the hotel, what? and he was just like in the snow. Like that's a parking lot, but that's covered no in legit shit. snow. And um. Han shots looks really good right now. Yeah, Han shots are in Norway because the clothes he had were built for sound stages, and he wasn't ready for the and they weren't ready for him for the cold. So he had to go to Norway where it was slightly warmer but snowy. <laughs> I guess they could do these kind of things back then, eh? Yeah. Well, it's I just mean, that forget it. We'll just send you over there. Yeah. Well, they weren't. That's not like it's far, <clears> right? <throat> 
Okay. No, but I mean, still, yeah. it's like you think you, you got the shop plan yeah. for right here. Yeah. Nowadays, they, it would have been like, you just cost $5 million, yeah. you just cost the well, movie, you, right? You get, like, like, Lord of the Rings even did cover sets and stuff like that, where it would rain, and they'd go into the, there was a squash court that had a bunch of rocks up, and they would just, oh, it's raining, so then they'd go and they'd be, like, wandering around the rocks, and, like, the Frodo and Sam scenes and stuff. They're like, we always got something to do. Oh, yeah, we so, got to do part two of that one soon, man. Uh, yeah, that's a June one. Oh. So that'll be next month. But, um. Put your finger right on it, huh? Well, that's my job. But uh, yeah, also every time you see that picture, nice warm cast uh, cast and crew and just Mark Hamill out there all by himself. Freezing his ass off. Yeah. That's hilarious. They, That's method acting. No doubt. This guy deserves an Oscar. Yeah. Uh, what was really interesting uh, was... I love that. I know. Uh, what, <laughs> what was really interesting was the... Um, uh, everybody... Was Zach Morris' cell yeah, phone. I know. But the... Um, what's it called? The... Uh, See, uh, that guy there, that's John Ratzenberger with the mustache. What? Norm from Cheers is... Oh, right there on the right. Yep. No shit. Yeah, so that's him. So that's so him. He's going to tell you a bunch of... uh, What a great voice. Whoa. Like... No, or uh, Cliffy. Yeah. So I want to... Is that his real voice? No, he's, he's... The one he does is his real voice, like in all the Toy Story movies. Right. This one, he was just getting all serious. I think it's because <laughs> they wanted people to be all British and shit. Right. Um, he looks British, actually. That's mm-hmm. funny. He does... He would suit a Brit. Yeah. They said, though... Um, uh, there was always the biggest rumor that the reason they did the Wampa scene was to give uh, Mark Hamill all the scars on his well, face. Well, yeah, because he hurt himself skiing or something. No, didn't it was he? a car accident, but it actually ends up not being true. The car accident was two years before he had no scars on his face when they shot. This was just planned. Actually, there were more Wampas planned to be in the in the movie. In the in the movie, like the original script, there was actually Wampas in the uh, thing. They had captured some that were like loose and attacking people and then there actually was an attack inside the hangar dear god like hey that. wampa world so they just basically cut it down to the one to give it a little bit more of a right menace like they're know? kind of like an elusive creature rather than like we're being attacked yeah alec guinness here obi-wan um, oh, yeah. luckily you got some so, ghost people hanging around for every time you're about to die somebody comes to save you right so he actually shot Everything for this movie in one day. He shot from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And he got a quarter of a percent of the whole box office. So it ends up being millions of dollars. Holy shit. Way to go, Alec Guinness. So he actually had eye surgery just prior to this. But uh, like in the original, original like story for the whole trilogy, he had meant to be alive for the whole thing. But then there was rumors that he didn't like the job. So they agreed that they would kill him, but then just bring him back as like a little guide in places. So he wouldn't have to kind of be there. You know, he just went to, he was like, I wonder what he thought of it afterwards. Like, Um, you know, cause he's like, oh, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a thespian and I act on stage and blah, blah, blah. And then once people love the movie everywhere, do you think maybe he changed his mind a bit or? Um, I don't know. I'm sure maybe I'm sure he appreciated that people liked the movie and liked him in it, but I like, it's just not his cup of tea. Literally. This is the best scene. Yeah. This is the, yeah. Uh, George oh, yeah. Lucas actually called this for the longest time. He said that this was the worst Star Wars movie and he was apologizing for it. And then pe- he started to realize that people thought it was the best. Yeah. One, and then he apologized. Oh. So interesting story. This was actually based on, you've seen the Revenant. Yes. This is based on the scene where he cuts the uh, Hugh glass cuts open the horse in the Revenant, which I didn't realize was a true story. Yeah, so yeah, that's based to on be like, uh, that's based on the real guy, and this is based on that moment. So the Revenant is ripping off a movie that ripped off the Revenant. Whoa! Right? Whoa! That's a lot of ripping off. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we were talking before about like the fines and stuff for uh, the credits and that. So George, George Lucas and Irvin Kershner were fined a combined two hundred fifty thousand dollars for not putting the credits at the beginning. Uh, Lucas, who, who does the MPA or something? Or? Uh, no, the the unions, the Directors Guild, and the no um, and the writers shit. Guild. Nobody even watches the goddamn credits. I know. Well, they did when they were at the beginning of the movie. Right? And then, well, you they, were, you well you nobody to. still watches them. No, I know, but, but that's it, why Marvel did what they did because now at least people stay for them. Exactly. Like, that was like the smartest idea. Yeah, they're the ones who. I might not be looking. Yeah. Well, but, like, what do you want? Well, oh my I god, is that John Favre? Favreau, look at this I guy. know it looks kind of like him. Oh my god! But the uh, he also uh, yeah he looks like John Favreau when he was in like Friends. Uh, <laughs> when you if you okay you know what this these this movie like okay this scene's a little whatever it still yeah. looks good though. Oh, it does. Yeah. This movie's gonna look better than the new ones do in fifty years. Everything's really there. 
Like some of the special yeah. effects, like the Tom Toms or whatever, Wom Wom uh, Jam Jams I running think for, around. I think for the most part, it'll the new ones will hold up. Look at this. Yeah, it's good. It looks but, awesome. But it, but it's still you can. It's like everything. It's it has its own style. Hopefully, so, maybe Disney will do what Lucas did, and like every now and then they'll just update it. I'm thinking they probably will sooner than That's later. That's probably in the contract. Yeah, it's probably like, yo, you gotta just at least come up with five different versions of each movie mm-hmm. year after year. No, because no. the eight trillion dollars you made <laughs> off it is not enough. Yeah, back in theaters with one quarter of a second of a new scene. <laughs> I'm like oh great oh look at this guy yeah he's that's breathing actually... in Luke's farts <laughs> yeah he's look at this you can see the tube going right there I like it his mouth Bre- is actually an old um, microphone uh, anybody who doesn't know that was Bacta that they're in- inserting into this tank oh is that right yeah yeah mm-hmm. see and they ripped off Starship Troopers everybody's by, like of uh, course we knew those Bacta idiot yeah I, I, plenty of them did right <laughs> so. Uh, there was oh, another reason yeah. people thought that he was, his face was all fucked up because in the uh, Christmas special, which came out prior to this, which oh, was actually God. which was actually the original. We're gonna do it. Yeah, too, we have to. But um, I don't know if I've seen it. Are you shit? I don't know if I've seen it or oh, not. We're canceling everything and watching that. Um, but he was wearing so much makeup, like it's caked on him, and they thought, oh, that must have been to also cover up the. Story. So his face was okay, which, which may have been. Well, his face was okay during shooting of this, apparently. Oh, but what like, happened? Well, his face got cut up and stuff when he had the accident, and he looked different, but he didn't have scars everywhere or right. anything like that, right? He so, still doesn't, does he? No, no, not at all. Just it looks like just, a grizzled old vet. Yeah, he's just three years older, and he was a kid when they yeah. started. He's aged a little. Oh, I love this. If uh, Nerf Herder. That's a band. No, there's... Well, yeah, because They're it's probably based on Yeah, right. Other way no, around, bro. Yeah. Well, it's like Fallout Boy, right? Yeah. But, um... Yeah, it's funny. There's, uh, you know, Star Wars has all kinds of like uh, books and uh, role playing games. Oh stuff. yeah. There's a role playing game that actually tells you why she calls him a nerf herder. It's because she was uh, on Alderaan growing up. There was a there was a nerf farm. Nerfs are these little animals, and one of them bit her, and it's like which caused her to hate nerfs and all who heard them. Uh, I was like, because you know. Nerds. Yeah, you mentioned all this role play. I this love it when only... girls pretend they're Leia and yeah. I'm Luke. That was the only scene, that hospital scene, where the main characters are together for the entire movie. Oh. Luke is not with anybody else for pretty much oh, the movie. Oh, I really of fucks movie, off, right? big wimp. I know, right? And then, uh, but then anytime you see, like, even when they're in the same location, they're never on screen together again. Yeah. Oh, but he's Maybe got his thing. cough lozenges ready to go. Well, he's stuck should. on his jacket there. You got Fisherman's Friend ready to go. Oh, rock. yeah. Right? Even He's always yelling and hollering at people. He's going to need one of those. <laughs> I'm really sad that uh, Peter Mayhew's done being Chewbacca. I understand it because he's old and he's got like, he replaced both his knees suffering from gigantism and stuff. Yeah, I know. But I mean, like, wh- wh- who cares? It's friggin'. Do you feel like he the performance literally... of Chewbacca will be lessened now because some new guy's got to take over? No, 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 not at all. It's just, it's just fun knowing, you know, just go to hey, here it's he the is, same right? guy. Yeah, it's just like, hey, the original cast is all here, and that's they not should true have killed now, right? him off. Oh. If I was Chewbacca, I would have said, I'll, "I'll only do the movie if you kill me off three times." That's essentially what happens Boom. to Han. We'll get into that. Oh yeah, blow that fucker up. Yeah. Well, I love that uh, all that shit on his yeah. face. So yeah, Lucas burned so many bridges during this. So after all that finding shit, he. I can't believe that was a big deal. They don't do that anymore, do no, they? He, no, well, again, the rules are you have to shoot, let's show them twice. It's just they don't have to be at the beginning anymore. You uh. got, it means you have to show them twice at the end. Oh, yeah, because usually it'll be at the beginning and then later on at the yeah. bad, it'll be again. Yes. So I always wondered why that was. I was like, yeah, I heard you. You're the director. How many fucking times are you going to tell me? That's specifically why. The, the, the above the line people uh. have to be shown twice. But the... Um, but yeah, so Lucas George Lucas left the Writers Guild and Directors Guild and the MPAA over this. So it really fucked him over when it came time to like hire for things. Like Steven Spielberg was supposed to direct um, uh, Return of the Jedi, and he couldn't because he was in the Directors Guild. So that's funny. That's awesome to know because yeah. I always knew that he was supposed to do yeah. number three. Mm-hmm. And that's why. So it caused... See that you just learned something out there in podcast world. This is what I'm here for, man. Um, so the guy on the left here is, is Admiral Ozzel. Uh, the only... He, like, he's in a ton of stuff. Nothing we'd really know. But the one thing you'd recognize him for... So the guy with the mustache when it goes back. He played Hitler in uh, in the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Ah! 
So that was and a he good... bumps into him and signs his book, right? Yes. Yeah. And... Oh, there he is. Granddaddy to that whiny little punk ass <laughs> bitch. And oops. My lord, um, uh, what suit? Okay, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure I must ask you. We got Comic Con coming up here. We do. Okay, if you're gonna go, are you dressing up? No, I don't. I, I tell you, I, I don't. What dress if I? Up. What if I dressed you up? What if I got you all mommied up? What if I pulled <laughs> your pants down, put some pants on to you? Well, then yeah. Raise your arms, slap the shirt on to you. I'm fine with that. Slap some makeup on to you. This raggedy guy here, Andy. I'll, I'll show, talk about him. Raggedy Andy. I'm not doing Raggedy, raggedy, raggedy Andy. Andy. Fuck that noise. This is the what one the of the few bad shots in the movie. Who would you go? Okay, Star Wars. You've got all the money. Who would you go as? I'll tell you because he's in this movie, but I will not reveal him until he shows oh, up. Oh, he's in this one. He's in this one. <clears throat> so, and I've actually spoken to people about. I what think it would I know who to. you're going to say. I'm not going to say it though. Yeah, but I've actually spoken to people about some of the logistics to figure out what I can do oh. to make to make the thing. And because so, I want to go, and I yeah. want to, uh, well, I, I want to go dress as something. Summer. Yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm hoping to. Uh, I'm hoping to. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, trying to. I'm trying to line up all these turkeys here. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I'm. Oh. I'm, I may end up going two days because I have still to go. loves it. I know. I want to go multiple days too. I want to really check the space well, out. Well, I'm man. going with my sister on the Friday. I like to I go with her for one day. And I'll do my autographs that day. Right. And if you want to go together on the other one, I don't know why we're making plans on the fucking. Let's podcast, do this thing, man. Somebody call and make plans with me for the weekend. Yeah. Fucking right on, Grafa. What's up, girl? <laughs> what, I what, like a lady with a mustache. How you living, baby? You know, come on. YouTube, uh, where are they going? What's happening? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh well, man. he's going to battle, and then he's supposed to be leaving. Uh, you know, he's stuff. got a sexy attitude. That one. Uh -huh. So yeah, um, so George Lucas originally he wanted to be really hands off of this movie because he got he had like that essentially, good idea. No, he essentially the best had, ideas whoa, ever had. Come on, let me talk. <laughs> so he had the he essentially had the heart attack for making the last one, being so stressed about it. So um, he was the he did the story. And he was the executive producer, and that was supposed to be it. He had somebody else producing it. He had, um, excuse me, somebody else write it. Uh, well, yeah, uh, well, he he didn't write. Oh, he did write the first one, but yeah, he had uh, so uh, Lawrence Kasdan, Gary Kurtz was producing it, but then K Gary Kurtz went like ten bill, uh, ten million dollars over budget. So then he had to come back and like get it back on track. And then the rough cut that was done by the editor was garbage and like it didn't look like a movie. So he had to take over on the editing and like he just Lucas, yeah, George Lucas. He had to keep. Oh no way! In. I didn't know that. Actually, cost him his marriage essentially because like he was. Holy the, Jesus! The reason he wanted the time off, uh, in addition to his health, he also wanted. Uh, he was building Skywalker Ranch at this time. He was expanding Lucasfilm into an actual thing because they were getting ready to make uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark at the same time. And then um, he was just he was fairly recently married. Um, the guy we're looking on, on the right there, uh, his name is uh, Kenneth Colley, and he played as Admiral Piet or well, Captain Piet at this point. He played Jesus in the Life of Brian. I <laughs> like that you know like. His admiral, like the rank he is at this point in time. Yeah, sorry. Oh, Can yeah. you do you know he that? Don't just, be sorry. He did just say. Don't it, be but... sorry for. Oh, that's my. That's my. Like bad. I did know. That's my but bad. He, he did just say it, but I no. Didn't but then know. you knew his ranking before. Yeah. You'll know it after. Mm -hmm. You know exactly how long it takes for one of these officers to become the next step up. <laughs> yeah. He's got all the paperwork. He's well. I I actually I have all of the. Uh, like, you know how you have to take the lieutenant's exam for, yes. like, the police and stuff like that? I have the exams for this one. I if, actually, I can be a brigadier general in, a, in any uh, if, any branch of the Imperial Army. If you're going to talk shit over top mm -hmm. of a Star Wars movie, you <laughs> literally need authorized papers. Yeah. Which he has. Uh-huh. Multiple I'm, times over. He goes back for the refresher courses. Yeah. Wait a minute. I want to go back to, I want to go back to, uh... What you talked about there before about this ruin, like this, this, these, these movies essentially made slash ruined yeah. his life. Oh yeah, absolutely. You said he almost had, he had, he did have a heart attack or he almost well, he had, had a heart he attack. had a heart problem. He got really sick. Like he was shooting like for a heart he attack. Was, yeah. He was right there. It Lost was, his wife. Yeah. So like they got married, they got divorced about two years after making the movie. So right around ish when this movie came out. Uh, this was awesome to actually see one of those ships go down. It's not as cool as what happens to the last Jedi, but we'll take what is, is it's cooler. Okay. This is the eighties. Yeah. Everything is cooler in the eighties. Yeah, that's true. It, well, this is 80. So it's still almost the seventies. Ooh, is it the eighties? The then 80s. if it's 80, well, yeah, it is. But you know what I mean? You think you'd be a two or three before you're right into the eighties. <laughs> Fair enough. Do um, you, do you, do you, sorry. Do, do you think that his wife, 
uh, tried to get half that 4.2 bill. I bet you she changed her mind after he got four billion dollars. She's probably like, "Hey, yeah. hey you know, Star Wars it's your great. ex-wife." You know, you did great. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Now he's made his choices. These <laughs> are still these are still like some of the most intimidating things to me. Like this shot is amazing. Of what the, a wicked scene, eh? Yeah, I never call them this, but even George Lucas has confirmed you would call them at ats, not at ats. Ad ass hats. At 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 at. Yeah. But I don't do that because there's also the ATST and they don't call them AT-SIT, so they can go why fuck themselves. Why not? Well, because they didn't. I don't know. What, why Why the difference of name? Look at that. I don't know. It was just, well, the ATST are the smaller ones, like the, 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 the two-legged ones. Oh, walkers. the two-legged guys, the little birdie, yeah. the, little, the little bird feeders. I call them the bird feeders. Yeah. I've never seen him in this, but in the uh, as one of the extras uh, is um, Joe Johnston. The uh, director who did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Jumanji, ah. uh, Jurassic Park 3, Captain America. Um, he was in the miniatures department for this, so they let lots of crew people be extras from time to time, but he was one of the Hoth soldiers. Mm. The rest of the Hoth soldiers, the one out in the snow, the ones out in the snow, were actually members of the uh, Norwegian, uh, Norwegian army or something like that. I have it written down here. But uh, but they to uh, thank them they made like this gigantic uh, Lucasfilm made like this gigantic donation to the uh, Norwegian Red Cross. Oh, they were ski rescuer rescue skiers is what they were. They weren't military rescue skiers. But, uh, there's General Veers. I've got his uh, information as well. He was he played Walter in uh, the Last Crus in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Okay. He's the one who actually like he gets the cup and he's the one who drinks from it and stuff. Oh, like so that. he's the one who you shrinks ch- away. You chose poorly. Yeah, he. I thought mm-hmm. he. You know what? I thought he looked familiar. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Also played Grand Maester Pycell in Game of Thrones. He's like the super old man. Uh, he's in Troy, and he's in the James Bond movie for your eyes only. Oh, do you, do you for Comic Con? Do you want to go me and you as one of those things? You can be the ass. <laughs> Why am it's kind of like going. Ass? It's kind of like going as a horse, only way cooler. Look at that thing. Yeah, well, uh, it is so cool. I own I own one of those. I'm I almost bought the large version, the old Kenner one, but it just skyrocketed in price in my thing. And it was like a couch or that thing. What do you I mean think you should have went with that. Oh yeah, like yeah. You either no, have I a couch you or you or that thing's in the living I, yeah, room. Yeah, well, of course. But... See you later, bed. Like, sorry, wifey. You must start your landing. Uh, Would you rather yeah. be a pilot for one of these flying around things or one of those walker? I think those walker things are really dangerous. Yeah, and and like and just I don't know, they're too slow. They are. Very I feel slow, like it'd be very vulnerable, but in they're one. super armored. Like they showed, like they're shooting and shooting, and nothing's happening. The tripping thing. This is what I really liked about the Last Jedi too. They trip them in this one. So naturally, what do they do? They figure out an engineering yep. way to fix it. In yep. the last in the ones in the last. I Jedi. thought that was really that was like the same when I saw the the lightsaber blocker. Oh, in, with- in uh. The Force Awakens. Yeah. The guy has that blocker. Same kind of yeah. thing. You know they would be getting technology. <laughs> yeah, to, the, the first Jedi to not lose his hand. Yeah. So. That's a, you get a medal for that. Yeah, no or doubt. Or a trophy at least. No doubt. He's showing off his sexy abs to Ray. It's all good. <laughs> That's a medal too. <laughs> uh, Boom. But, but yeah, some other uh, relationships that uh, of that good old uh, uh, George Lucas ruined. So Gary Kurtz was the producer after he went over budget and he came in and took over. They never worked on a movie together again. Uh, and then uh, oh, Wedge there too, Dennis Lawson, who is uh, Ewan McGregor's uncle. Uh, he wasn't hmm. supposed to be in this movie, but people liked him so much in the first one that like there was demand for Wedge. They just threw him in there be, again, eh? Like, yeah, That's Ewan be... McGregor's uncle. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and apparently, doesn't well, Ewan? No, he's in one. Never mind. Uh, I was gonna be. Does he have a cameo in one of those movies? <laughs> no, sort of. <laughs> like, he sort he, of does. He, uh... He's his voice is in the Force Awakens when Ray. You know, Ray has that weird hallucination when yes. she gets the thing. You can hear. Uh, you can hear Ewan McGregor <clears throat> saying one of uh, Alec Guinness's lines. Totally. See? You did it. I know it. what the fuck I'm talking about, man. You know Star Wars better than fuck me, yay. I think. I don't need... You know, I'm just going to... Just like last time, you know, I'm just going to nap out for a while. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to take my belt off. <laughs> Joe, and... take take the wheel. He's, I know, like, he's like hyperventilating <clears throat> here with all this information he's got. See, there's one of the ATSTs. There was originally supposed to be a lot more of them, but they just thought these guys were more menacing and that the other ones were better, like, close combat fighting right. things, which is why they're the only ones you see in uh, Return of the Jedi. 
Because you just see the ATSDs. Oh, look at this guy's been punching himself in the face. Mm-hmm. He's been falling asleep, and then the thing, he got drunk last night, and he's like, what the hell was I thinking? He does have a big drunk. He had else. no idea. That was his day off. He didn't know there was going to be an attack. Yeah, I wasn't prepared. They picked him up off the bar <laughs> floor, right, and slapped him in one of these things. Yeah. Oh, so, see, look, look. Mm-hmm. Oh. Why, why, why did he have a bloody nose? Was he hit already? Uh, yeah, I think so. But Oh, the, my God, Ernest. Ernest got uh, to them. Uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> Paper clips and uh, shit. It's a good crash. This actually, uh, this scene here was shot the day his son was born. So he like literally came from the hospital to, to shoot this. And he actually breaks his thumb in this scene. So he breaks his thumb the day his son oh, was no born. Oh, no way. He's getting his son out of the back right now. He's like, yeah. Jesus Christ, nope, let him get, get out of here. Let him get crashed. It is what it is. <laughs> but uh, you can always make more babies <laughs> as long as you that, have right? a vasectomy. And you can if you get crushed. Yeah, exactly. I like where your head's at. <laughs> I'm cl- I'm glad. <laughs> Are you okay? Yep. Oh, well, I just had some weird that subs <laughs> subs coming back on me. Yeah, it's a it's a bad thing to do is to pow is to like oh. eat a sub like a duck right before coming. Just throw. <laughs> I didn't it even out. chew. <laughs> I demanded that he start at the other end with a shoehorn. I know. and smack at it to help it slide its way down. Yeah, there was like a dead 3PO that was frozen over in the corner. Aww. I was like, that must be four, but there he is, see? I, didn't, I missed it. Oh, uh, they might get the long shot again. I don't want to see something like that. God yeah. damn it. Give the evacuation. Does every movie she's got something new with her hair? She always wear a hair yeah, like that. Yeah, constantly. See, there. it keeps there. You just keep to I the keep left looking the for, I keep looking at her gorgeous hair. What do you want from me? She's beautiful. Um, so, yeah, Lawrence Kasdan... This was the first script that was actually made into a movie for him. But the first one he was hired to do was Raiders of the Lost Ark. So he made that one first, then this one. But then they came out in the opposite order. Oh, he he wrote Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. Right on, yeah. buddy. Oh, he's got a he's got a pretty interesting one. He wrote um he wrote and directed The Big Chill. He wrote That's a and, good movie. He wrote and directed Silverado. He wrote and directed The Accidental Tourist. He wrote The Bodyguard. He wrote oh. Wyatt, He wrote Wyatt Earp. No he wrote, shit. He wrote The Force Awakens and he wrote Solo, a Star Wars story that's coming out. Oh, ooh, I can't yeah. wait to see that one, man. Yeah. That one's got all the controversy. Mm-hmm. He also wrote and directed Dreamcatcher, that really shitty stuff. Uh, yeah, Stephen King. That's why I know that name. Yep. What a terrible yeah. movie. And he was in one of the jo- doctors in As Good As It Gets, as long as as well as Harold Ramis. Oh. I guess uh, Jim Brooks was just ha- getting his director friends to come hang out. So he really um, has, a, obviously, a handle on the whole Star Wars lore if they asked him to come back for Force Awakens, yeah, right? Exactly. Well, they were like, they were like they knew this was people's favorite movie. So they were so like, they well, why not get up. the guy who, right. you know? Did he write two scripts? Because uh, I remember J.J. saying that there was two scripts... One of them had all the old characters in it, yeah. like kind of integrated, and one of them was all new. And they eventually, oh. did, just before kind of like, you know, did, before they, crunch time, they were like, okay, we'll go with this one. They were probably developing the story before they confirmed everybody was going to be there, mm. so they needed to make sure they had a version that right. would without them. So, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they probably, it was probably the same script with just like those guys' lines given to other people or, you know, like for exposition or whatever. Right. Um, the other thing, though, about Lawrence Kasdan, he's Jake Kasdan's father, and he was a producer on Freaks and Geeks, Walk Hard, uh, the new Jumanji, and he don't, who had she also directed. Directed. So he's got a billion dollar movie out himself. A movie way that looks like the Cobra Commander of uh, Star Wars guys. This, yeah, the Imperial Snowtroopers look bad. I'm going to tell you by the end of this shot. who I would like to be. Okay, if I had all the money. Yeah, I have a feeling it's somebody on Jabba's thing. Yeah, yeah. Salacious Crump. Oh. Probably. <laughs> oh my God, yes. You know, I like the guy on the keyboard. Doot, 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 doot. Max Rebo. Because I had that toy yeah. too. I'd probably be Max Rebo. That would be a good one, but that would be a hard like. You know how hot you'd be in that in June because it would be like probably like Buddy, a late. You know what? It pay. Other. You got to pay to play, bro. It would smell if like I the inside of that out, tauntaun. Yeah. If I got to pass out, during, you know, this, in the middle of Comic Con. This so reminds be it. me a lot of uh, Rogue One, where it's that like chase down into the into the last thing, and they get away just in time for, as uh, as uh, Vader shows up. Yeah, they seem yeah. to be doing that with the new ones. I'm really interested to see where Ryan. Johnson's going to go with the three new ones. Yeah. Brand I'm new. I'm curious. And you heard as well, John Favreau is directing and a live uh, action TV. The, yeah. Which is going to be on the Disney streaming service. Writing and oh, Jesus Christ. That's yeah. all Disney needs now, right? Yeah. Well, you know, we need to jump on board Disney's podcast channel. I'm down with that. Oh, yeah. If Imagine Disney that. wanted they to hire us all this, all this swag. If Disney wanted to hire me for literally anything, I would be on board. You're their orphan killer. 
Oh no! Like you're taking it in the back. We're done with this one. Boom! I'll do it. Don't get me wrong, but like, just it, was, <laughs> it wasn't sorry, ideal. Sorry, little Timmy. But uh, there's something about it. I know. Like, you know, even like at Disney World, like the hump jobs suck and all that kind of thing. The things. hump no, jobs. No, you know what I mean. Like Somebody's like got to go get Pluto off or it'll <laughs> be humping the kids. No, but I'm talking oh, like, Jesus. like the janitorial things and stuff like that. So what? But even that, no, but I'm just saying, like, what, even when janitors? I went, no, I'm, what I'm saying is even when I was there, I was sitting there for something and one of the janitors came up and just started talking to me and giving me tips about the park. And I'm just like, like, even at that level, everybody is super friendly and super yeah, he's like, like, awesome. He's like, hey, you seem to be sitting there he's like uh you know what you should go kill me you, you need to go down the road there and you need to get an ice cream cone and get me out of here please i'll pay anything uh we, uh, <laughs> yeah no but it was just like that was that's just what i always find there is everybody like you you don't get that everywhere you're told to be like that everywhere like you go to canada's wonderland and stuff like that you're gonna tell me you're gonna find somebody like that behind the counter Not no a hells no you like literally everybody is a moment from <laughs> like, killing themselves it's like your orphan killing position at a uh, thing where you no don't want to do a phone rings you better pull that kid's brains out huh Are you fire? <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh mickey please yeah. i'm coming down there no, I, I wouldn't even say please. I'd just be like, oh, man, all right. like Let's get to her. Pitter-patter, let's get yeah. at her, right? Oh, yeah. It's kind of like when cops get a bad call. They're like, oh, there's a chance I might get shot at during this one. But it's my duty. I got to do what I got to do for the great It's my event. house. Right. Oh, this is... You notice in the one scene before his leg is silver? Yeah. Just it's, one piece of his leg? Yeah, it's one of my favorite lines in this whole movie. Shut him up or shut him down. It's just good rhythm, good poetry. People say that to me and about me all the time. Mm. Yeah, as I was about or to say. shut him down. <laughs> oh, look at this close call. Yeah. I don't think you can take Ooh. invasive action that close. I love the, just I, the you scale know of those things. I, I, I haven't seen this movie in forever, man. I don't remember nothing. I've seen it. All the time. Oh my god, it's constantly it's running through your brain like at all times. I'm halfway through watching it the first <laughs> the last time I watched it. Like we're watching it <laughs> right. again. It's like I watch it, you know, like when you do row, row, row your boat in a round. That's how I watch Star Wars movies. I'm like halfway through the other one. It's you're like you're overlapping them. He's got two TVs. Yeah. He starts Star Wars and then thirty minutes in he starts Star Wars on the other one. For the record, I have three TVs, so Oh well, sorry. I have one of the tri- one of the trilogies going on each one. The alluvial dampers. Is he just saying shit, or did someone tell yeah. him to say that? Well, I'm sure. Bring me the hydro spanner. I'm sure somebody said something. I think that's the exact hole that uh that Ray is in. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. So I hydro spanner sounds like something that you need. Huh. A hydro line has been spliced no. or something and you need to divert some hydro. Yeah, makes sense. I think it's essentially a wrench. I th- it sounds very much like a doctor who thing. Yeah. So we're in this asteroid field. There's two really interesting things about the interesting things about the asteroid. One of the asteroids, as we start to see it, you don't see it in this version, but, um, the, uh, you see one of the asteroids is a shoe. <laughs> and the reason being what? is because after watching the dailies over and over again, George Lucas kept making them redo it. Cause like the, it's just the asteroids. It was like, no, there's too many. You got to make it so they could possibly fly through it. Okay. Now it's too smart. And they kept doing it. So they were just like, fuck it. And they threw a shoe in the background and then it, it made it to the thing. But it's, <laughs> it's since, but if you noticed it, he was just like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, probably. He's like, I'm not having another heart attack over a shoe. Yeah. Like, fuck it. Another then, floating shoe. And then I've never found it on here, but one of them is a t- is a potato. I'll find it. I'll find your. No, I think we've already potato. passed it. Yeah, I, I think one's we... a potato. I love it when the shoes and it's like perfect. Yeah. So like, it's it maybe Lucas that. has some weird thing where as long as there's a shoe there, his mind doesn't even register it, but then he's happy. You know, you know what I mean? It's a weird like, yeah. mental disease. Like, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't even know. Like, put that shoe there. You forgot to put the shoe in the corner, you moron. Oh yeah. <laughs> shoe anesthesia. Yeah. All right, I'm done with that. <laughs> foot fat. What do you call when you have a foot fetish? Oh, P- foot, foot foot fetish. Pedo. Pet. Pedophilia. 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 It's different. <coughs> yeah. Boom. I, dis- I disagree. I don't think it's different. Bam. Bam is right. Look at you yeah. guys flying. I love watching the Millennium Falcon fly. Like, I mean, it's one of those things where it's. Like, again, everything that happens in space in any of these movies are, like, bullshit, but it's, like... It's It's still still cool. It's so, like, well done and so beautiful to look at, like, the... They got this at Disney coming? Coming at Disney now? We're uh, driving the Falcon? Yeah, you'll be able to be in the Millennium Falcon. There's a full-size one, and there's a ride that's somehow... 
Well, that's like if you thing. can go in the cockpit and shoot dudes. I don't understand what exactly is going to happen with it because they said something about a like some kind of simulation or something like that. But I don't know how you do that where you got a bunch of people. So I mean, they should have where somebody's got to be like, who's going to drive? Yeah. Who's Han? You're Chewy. You're in the chair. But that's the you problem. get in the you guys get to sit in the back. You know, because what's it called in uh, uh, Back to the Future was only like four people sitting in the car. Yeah, but they didn't all have roles, right? You just sat there and watched what was happening. No, but you would get a quick, you know, while you're going through the lineup, you would get like, you know, so there'll only be a few things Mm -hmm. to do and it's on rails anyways, right? So, you know, if you let go of the thing, it'll still go. Yeah. But, you know, you'll feel a little like, pull up, pull up. You know, you'll have to like really give her and then put it into hyperdrive, you know? That would have been really cool. Still, for my money, Star Tours is one of my favorite rides. That was mine as well. I I was at Disney so long ago and that tour, uh, that ride, I thought I was going to Ralph. Yeah. Like during, I was like, oh my God. But it was awesome. They've updated the ride probably twice since you've been there too. Because there's really? the, the, there's Force Awakens stuff in it now. Oh, sweet! So it's oh so yeah, I forgot about this guy. What? There he is. He just <laughs> landed. Well, it took him a while to get there, right? I guess. Yeah. What a fucking dump! That's what he just said. Yeah. I'm learning how to speak R2. Look at this shitberg. They're in the bog of eternal stench. <laughs> I would like to actually see some of the versions of this where because I, the uh, characters. Uh, not so much with R2, but with uh, Chewbacca and uh, some of the other ones, and Vader with a different guy inside and stuff. They would say their lines. It's fun to listen to that because like it's all muffled and it's like, but you can kind of make it. Oh, when say. he's saying it inside the. But like Chewbacca, for example, is saying lines. He's not just going. Rah, rah. He's like, I think he's like, he's like, I don't think you should do that, right? And then like, and then Han they add the right. It. So. See, this was a, that was one of those other shots that made people think something was wrong with him. Like his look, his lip looks really fucked up here. It's got a big fat lip. Well, it's getting pushed up. around, man. Apparently, George Lucas is a bully. Apparently, I think it was this shot uh, where it was just like the close up stuff with R two was actually shot in uh, George Lucas's unfinished pool. No way. He's like in the mud bog. He's just like, it's so crazy. How they can just do that right in the backyard yeah. in the pool and then. Well, it's not, oh, you yeah, know. Just jump right in. Don't even test the water out or anything. Yeah, I know. Especially Holy after being fuck, in, like. Especially after being like sucked underground, underwater in the first one. <laughs> like in the, uh, yeah. in the garbage compactor. It could be like, you know, because he is a robot there, bud. So like you just jump and you could have just lost your lower half. <laughs> oh, or it could be just pure acid. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, just. Uh, yeah, see, that's a bog. See that? I see that little yeah. fart move there? Oh, yeah. Is that the bog of eternal Ludo stretch? should have been standing. Ludo, he should have been standing there <laughs> watching them crash. Um, apparently, when making the movie, because they went so over budget because of, uh, well, presumably because of Gary Kurtz, they had to go to Fox for a little bit of a loan to like just kind of get back on track. Right. Uh, but they needed to negotiate something. He didn't want to lose the rights or anything like that for any of the stuff. He wanted to stay independent on the whole thing. And he got like a killer deal. So he got the, he basically got everything he wanted and gave up nothing. And it co- ended up causing uh, Alan Ladd Jr. Who was like the head of the studio to quit. Holy over the whole shit. Deal. And that's why, um, George Lucas sh- shot, um, what's it called? Uh, Indiana Jones with Paramount because they were uh, like, basically that was his guy at Fox. And then now he's gone. So he's like ruining people's lives there. Lucas He's literally just like, he took a lightsaber and just took it to every bridge. Holy like, it was, fuck. Eh? Like this, this did a lot of harm for, for him in oh, a way wait, that wait. made him so, a billionaire. But the first one made a shit ton of money and yep. it warranted a sequel. So why were people so like, well, I don't want to make this movie. No, movie. no, it was nobody was like that. That's the thing. He wanted independence, so he did it on his own. Oh, okay. So yeah, he's he like, didn't oh. want like Yeah. Oh yeah. So they explain exactly what this is. I was doing some research on this, and it's essentially just a hyperbaric chamber that like pumps in oxygen at like heavier than the uh air pressure so right. he can actually breathe without his mask on for a minute right but then it's like so if can he can hang out in the little bubble he's like yeah, a bubble exactly. boy well it's probably stinks in there right so he uh, takes it off like i picture he's got like a toothbrush and some dawn and he's like giving uh, it a scrub. Like, yeah who does clean out his helmet well he has you know, to be you, him because he can't you, take it off you know that scene uh right there mm-hmm. when you know he comes in he's getting his helmet that's sort of like when you accidentally walk in and your mom and she's putting her bra on Oh my god! Does that does that come up with you a lot? <laughs> accidentally, yep. Yeah, accidentally, all daily, all the time. <laughs> Five, four to six. Look at this. Yep. 
<laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, so <laughs> Harrison Ford here. So they, I guess they officially announced the new Indiana Jones is shooting in the spring. Oh my God. Why? Yeah. They're doing it. Uh, Spielberg's doing another one. Oh, sweet. So we'll see how it goes. I think it's gonna be good. I didn't mind the last one other than the monkeys and the, yeah, there nuke was the fridge and yeah. Shia LaBeouf. I didn't. I actually didn't mind the nuke the fridge thing. I mean, it was cheesy. But well, you know, the, right when you the see right the fridge is getting nuked, what type of movie is this, right? Yeah. Like, come on. Then you should be able to accept the, yeah. the aliens. I thought end. you know me and my buddy Hip Man. We watch. We all we, we all watch it all the time. All the time we're just like, yeah. hey, you want to watch Indiana Jones and Crystal Skull? I'm like, yep, fucking a. I think that you could probably cut that one down. You take a little bit of Shia LaBeouf out of it. You He's take, not going to be in the next one, is he? Uh, no, probably he didn't not. shit talk Spielberg, that little motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, you fucked up, dude. Oh, yeah. So the two things I don't shit talk. I don't shit talk Disney. I don't shit talk Spielberg. I would because. never shit talk Spielberg, but I have been known to shit talk Disney. Yeah, but I have no reason to do either. It was like, neither do I. I still do it. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fun. <laughs> I love it. Especially when you do it in song form. Yeah. You know what I just saw not long uh, on the weekend was Moana. Yeah, I, I really loved, liked it, actually. I loved Moana. You know what the thing, too, was like, it was like a uh, musical, but it wasn't like, I liked it. I liked yeah. the musical numbers because it's just one person or two people singing a song out yeah. in the water. It's not like the whole town is singing. Yeah. But it was powerful. Like, the whole thing was really good. I've seen... Yeah, Rock it, had a pretty good singing voice, too. Yeah. The Rock is good at literally anything he does, and it's kind of starting to get on my It nerves. is. It's disgusting. It's just like, ugh. Anything. I'd like him actually, though, saying all that, I'd kind of like him to be the next Terminator. You think? Stop, stop Arnie being the Terminator. Make it the rock. And make it the rock. He's the next one up. Can he be not charismatic? Because you need a certain you yeah. need a certain type of charisma to be the Terminator, but not like the rock's well, overflowing charisma bin. Picture I picture him being like kind of in like Terminator Salvation. What's his face? Um there he is. Yeah, no, Yoda's the fucking best. Uh, Simon Pegg tells a great story. He showed his daughter this movie when he, uh, when he, when she was three. And then like, she saw him again or something like that. And something else. And he was, oh, he, excuse me. He's like, oh, he's real. And it just made him start crying. And I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what that means. I just, I showed a scene of Jurassic Park to Reese who's my two-year-old son. Right. And it's the scene when they first see the dinosaurs. Yeah. And he sees I that. I think I just came over when you, that happened. You literally just have, it literally just happened as you were walking yeah. through the door. And he was just like, and like Carrie just started crying. Like it was so emotional. It was like, cause it's exactly that moment you want as a parent. For right. Those big movie moments. Abby had the moment in the big reveal in this movie. And like, and she was like, Oh, like, and I'm like, yes, that's exactly what so I So when he saw a big dinosaur, he was like, Whoa. Mm -hmm. So can we talk about Frank Oz for no. a moment? Well, I'm going to anyways. No, right. um, this role was actually originally it offered. I know this is the he little, little, little Yoda bomb. Look at him, they, eh? they make him so Get playful. Out of there. Like he's so funny. His dirty story. feet too. I know. But like this is what was missing from him in the prequels. <laughs> like he was like this in The Last Jedi. He was very playful <laughs> and kind of like, ha ha. Like yeah. whatever, right? But um, but yeah, Jim Henson was offered this role originally because George Lucas and him were friends. Right. And then he said he couldn't do it because he was doing uh, The Great Muppet Caper, I think it was. And so he said, you should get Frank Oz. He's like, he's the one to do it. So anybody who doesn't know, he was actually born Frank Osnowitz. Like, that's kind of like the weird, like, superhero fake name. But uh, he was one of the originating members of the Jim Henson Workshop. He voiced Cookie Monster, Bert, Grover, Miss Piggy, Animal, Sam Eagle, and Fozzie. Oh, he's and the man. That was, that was in order. Oh, yeah, he's the man. So he was in uh, American Werewolf in London. Yeah. He was in and directed Dark Crystal. He was in yeah. Trading Places, Superman 3, Spies Like Us, Labyrinth, Monsters, Inc. Uh, he was in all the prequels as Yoda. He was in Zathura. He was in Inside Out. I like Zathura. Zathura was all right, yeah. And uh, then uh, obviously he was in The Last Jedi also as Yoda. He wrote Muppets Take Manhattan. That's the uh, best one. That's my favorite one. And he also directed it. He uh, directed, like I said, Dark Crystal, Little Shop of Horrors, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, What About Bob, Bowfinger, The Score, Stepford Wives. And he's got a new thing out, which I really want to see. He's fi They financed and they put this out themselves. It's not like on Netflix or anything. It's a documentary called um, Muppet Guys Talking. And it's people oh, who, yeah. it's like, mu it's Muppet performers from kind of over the generations. Right. I think I've seen something about yeah, this. If you go on, if you go online, if you look it up online, they've I got a website for it. And you can like, some, I didn't know what it was though. You can, you can buy it online on their website and they, uh, and then you can get like unlimited download and streaming for, for it and stuff like, it's kind of the way Louis CK did his, uh, comedy specials. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the only thing that's similar to Louis did. CK. Did. Yeah. Did. Underlined. Mm-hmm. 
I oh, get, I yeah, get it. Been <laughs> so uh, somebody else we missed, another weird uncredited role. Treat Williams was one of the troops at, at Echo oh, Base. Oh my God. He's just like one of the guys. I've never seen him in this. It's just, he's in the credits. Have we so. watched a Muppet movie yet? No. We haven't? No. Huh. I do Manhattan, eh? Yeah, man. Hell yeah. I do Manhattan. I do Ke- Muppet Keeper for one reason. That I got the paper towels. Because <laughs> he's like the it's best. The man. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, here we go. And it's like the original Simpsons when it comes to like the voice actors and stuff. Because yeah. it's like four guys who do everything, right? Ooh, well, she's got a bad attitude. This one. Yeah. I like ladies yeah. with a bad attitude. I know it. But what also kills me too with the Muppet guys is how well they replace each other. Like, like the well, guy, I can't show up. So this guy's going to do it. Well, like when Frank Oz stopped doing the Muppets, right. Another guy took over all, but one of his roles. Yep. And like Miss Piggy still sounds like Miss Piggy. Fozzie yep. still sounds yep. like Fozzie. Like it's not even like, I didn't hear the I'm, differences, but it's, yeah. it's so close that yeah. it's like, but like you remember when Mel Blanc stopped doing Bugs Bunny and somebody else did. And it yeah. was clearly different. Oh yeah. Like it's negligible with the Muppets. It's I like agree. They picked the right people. Yes, they did. Jobs. It was like when Jim Henson died, the guy who took over Kermit. Or like, uh, guys, or like when they busted uh, Elmo there. Yeah. <laughs> flawless. <laughs> a flawless bust. Yeah, Jesus, exactly. that guy had it coming for a long yeah. time. He ended up being found uh, not guilty of that. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. That was oh, good for him. That ended up not being that guy. Sir. And you got your hand up a kid's puppet, your kid's puppet's yeah. ass all day long. People start to take, uh, yeah, you know they start to think things. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What's Did they just kiss there and they were busted, or are they about to kiss? Yeah, no, he, yeah, they just got uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, like you, Fox C three PO, way to go. Yeah, so the C, the C and C three PO stands for cock block. The- <laughs> it's like what's her name? That's fact. Joan Rivers in uh, Spaceballs. Oh, that was my virgin <laughs> It's well, Spaceballs, another one we have to do. Yeah. Uh, like, I like this one too, where they had the uh, all the holograms and the one guy got killed. So oh, like is that what going, just oh, happened there? Yeah. See, he's an admiral now. He was captain. <laughs> <laughs> I can follow him. This guy's, you know, well, what do they call them? They're not the, they're not the space navy. What the hell are they? Look they're at that the, little guy. They're the imperial navy. The imperial navy. Yeah, yeah. That, I love the look of that specific ship because it's got like the blue lights across the side and stuff like that. So this, we're watching the remastered version, obviously, but the, uh, so this is the version where Ian McDermott is in it. He is not in the original version. That's right. He was played by a man named Clive something I gotta hear. I, I can't, I can dig the idea of replacing oh. him. There, there you are know, a lot I mean, like things. still a pointless waste of fucking money, but I mean, like if you're going to put no. something in or replace something, that makes sense. Cause he's the guy who plays him later. Right. Well, and they did the same thing with Boba Fett's voice and stuff mm. like that. Those ones I agree with. If you want to keep a continuity that goes through the whole thing and say, this is one complete story, then these are necessary. And they actually changed a lot of the dialogue here to match with the, pre- excuse me, with the prequels. And, um, yeah, but, and Ian McDermott. I don't care what you think about the prequels. Ian McDiarmid is amazing in all three of them. I agree. He's good. Palpatine, right? So good. Yeah. And it's like for me in um, Re- in uh, Revenge of the Sith, just flawless because he takes in like everything about the Force is like kind of like a sexual perversion to him where he's like, you know, he's sitting there, he's like, I feel your anger. He's like, Ooh. oh, he's like, loving so, like, it. Yeah. It's like tweaking a nip. Like, just like, <laughs> he's so good. Uh, but the, uh, but yeah, uh, Clive Revel was the name of the guy who he replaced. But uh, it makes perfect sense to me. And the uh, and the other version looked weird too. Like his face was all fucking weird, and it was. Just... Where's Yoda from originally? Where's the Yoda race? They don't actually. They don't say ever where he's from, but there is one more member of his race, and we I think we talked about this before. Yaddle is a member of the, in the uh, in episode one. You can see Yaddle in the uh, the Jedi Council room. There's right. A, there's another one just oh. sitting there, and it's a female one who's got like a little tuft of hair. This is, stuff, but this looks like about. Buddy's hut from uh, the Never Ending Story. Yeah, that's a thing full of worms. Yeah, <laughs> eat it. <laughs> Yeah, so this is tough because all of the sets on Dagobah are raised five feet off the ground because Frank Oz is underneath. Get his hand up there, right? Yeah, so he's standing up and walking yeah. around and doing everything. But so this like leaves uh, Mark Hamill alone 
for like a month. This it took 180 days to shoot this, longer than any what? of the other movies. Yeah, well, because they had to go all over the world to shoot this one. It wasn't just like holy right? shit. So this was a, this was a big one, and the Dagobah stuff was really uh, daunting. And especially from our camel, who's literally the only person on the call, on the call screen. Well, yeah. Whenever you watch like the Jim Henson stuff, it's always like if the sets are raised up. It's like yeah. making these puppet movies is a fucking nightmare. Yeah, it's tough. And so he's got an earpiece in right now, so he can hear Frank Oz underneath. So Frank Oz has a mic on him, and they're communicating that way. And then um, Kirshner is giving Yoda directly directions because he's not underneath with right thing and then so uh frank oz kept having to say hey you know you're not talking to me right like, like i need to hear you down here you're talking to the puppet on my hand did did he just hear oh he did yeah yeah he did that hit they had to do that 16 times oh. before Irvin kershner was happy oh i thought it. you were just about to say like that was an accident they kept it but no no no, no. no. keep slamming your head around no they they have to get him but i really like this is when you really get the Jedi and there is this scene he says, and then there's a monologue that he has later that I love. I think it's my favorite thing in all of the star Wars movies is the little, uh, thing he says when he talks about like the force and stuff like right. that. I've just, Was that right now? Is that coming up or what? it's after when he's teaching him <clears throat> everything, but I like this one too, because it's kind of a, mm? a jo- mm? but like to take something that realistically should be so silly right to have this puppet with a weird voice and talks weird and stuff like that he's amazing so much so that george lucas spent thousands on an oscar campaign for him what well they wanted him to be nominated for best supporting actor <laughs> well, it's not it's not silly at all <laughs> that's hilarious I, yoda comes up to accept his award no, well no this is no, in the no. same realm as i think that andy yeah. circus deserves awards well that's what yeah they didn't same kind of thing and it wasn't right nominate yoda it was nominate frank oz oh okay i was like what the yeah. shit like yeah i was sitting there like why are you laughing it's I it's a hundred percent valid I thought you like were. it's that would be way yeah, better no it's it's exactly i'm not impressed now that you say frank oz mm-hmm but they basically said the same thing that they said about Gollum. They're like, well, you don't see the real person on right. set, so it doesn't count. They need and to change that. George Lucas lost his mind, and then uh, Frank Oz didn't really care. He's just like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Like, I, I don't care. It was a crap shoot anyways. Yeah, exactly. I love uh, when you see, if you watch the episode one making of thing, there's a great scene where you actually see him like just doing the run through because he was still doing the puppet at that time. Right. And so he's doing all the things and he's just like and he's like I'm and it's so cool to see him because he's also a director and you see him and George Lucas kind of going over. He's like, I'm just kind of doing this half speed right now just to show you. Right. So he's like he's like I'm saving it obviously but he's like I'm just going and it was so interesting to do. Um, that uh weird like s- that scream thing that the Minoc does, that creature there, is actually a horse backwards. I think it looked like a walrus's butthole. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the, just the sound. Yeah, the noise it made, right? Wee, yeah. What is it? Is that a horse played backwards? Backwards. I don't know how they figure that shit out. They probably you know just I mean? have. They probably have a database of sound effects. Just a like, ton. Here's a horse, and they're like, "What does it sound like if we raise the pitch?" No, or it doesn't. That's how not the many sound. times it took before they found that one? You know what I mean? Like oh. how many animals they went backwards on and this and that and well there's always a combination it's just like with like the law uh i think jurassic park that's was the best one dude yeah. that is exactly what i was just about to talk about yeah. see this is I, it's like a tiger mixed with like a thing and a squeal and, yeah and it, there's a walrus a tiger, yeah like, it's all it's types of, of shit morphed together yep yeah all hits one and it's really interesting to see those things you know you've got a beautiful mind i know yeah but Get in there. there. I don't find find me another podcast where the two hosts are this in sync. You go, you <laughs> right? find it. You what couldn't even have fuck? a podcast about in sync with two people from in sync. Yeah, and they would be that in sync. No, they wouldn't. No. Could you just say that one more time? Nope. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> His eyes are bleeding. Look into the camera. <laughs> Put on your three D glasses now. <clears throat> oh, I like their little. Uh, oh, Jesus. What are these little kites? What are these Probably. Guys? What are these guys' names? Oh, My- he got stuck on his gun there. Minox. Minox. Is there anything in here that you don't know the name of? Let's find out. Okay, well, let's just find out here. This is a drinking game where no drinking gets done. <laughs> uh, and what happens just is you just see if, if Joe can't name something from Star Wars, you, you take a drink. So now what you do is you go put your booze back into the fridge. Yeah. And uh, game over. Yeah. This was actually meant George Lucas wrote this to be kind of a funny slapsticky kind of thing that they were actually inside a creature the whole time. And then he's like, when people actually took it to be like, uh, 
like a good action moment. Yeah, like, like holy they get up shit. And like, Whoa, like, yeah. And he was like, oh, I wanted that to be funny. <laughs> You wanted unanimous laughter in the theater, well, right? Well, it was kind of like the way like he wrote Jar Jar Binks to be a comedic character, and then everybody was like, kill him now. He's yeah, like, oh. yeah. I love when he says that Jar Jar was always planned, and then suddenly in the next movie, ain't no Jar Jar to be seen nowhere. So, wow, yeah. yeah. Well, he could have always been planned, but then they, uh, said, but then they had it. to, yeah, they are like, well, okay, we got to take his shit out. Oh, God. It was like... Wee. They look same. like they have the same kind of thing going on in Solo, only it's like a tentacle monster or something. Yeah. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, <buddy. laughs> That's in the new uh, I like the that, new but... cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sort of like he ate and then threw it up, only I guess yeah. he took it the one in the other end. I what, guess they so. went up his butt or what? Yeah, Maybe they went through his open so. mouth and then turned around and then came out the same way they went in. I'm guessing he went through his open mouth. Yeah. Maybe he's like two, like a worm where he's got two mouths on either end. That's he, what I he think. Could, he could be a lot of things. I don't know. We didn't see the other end, so we have nothing. I got a lot of questions about this guy. This is very Here we go. This is, our, this is our, uh, this is our, this is it. This is, br- this, I was like, going to say something, but I don't do it. I don't yeah, ruin anything. Yeah. <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> Just, oh, shut it down. Yeah, This is not a podcast anymore. <laughs> this is a serious discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, can you imagine like any any little part of this being different. Like even Yoda's name was originally meant to be Minch Yoda. Was Minch? The, was, was the whole name. And then they just shortened it to Yoda just because it sounds clean. Minch Yoda. Yeah. I don't know. Like Minch Yoda. It sounds does like. What that mean? I don't know. It was, it was just his first name. Like he had a, he had two names. Sounds Jewish or something. Well, is he, George Lucas Jewish? No. He, Spielberg is. Yeah, but Spielberg had nothing to do with Close this. Close enough. Kirshner, I think, is Jewish. Yeah, see? There you go. Yeah. So he's like mensch. Yeah. You're a real mensch, Yoda. <laughs> exactly. I like it. Cheap. What do you think he lives in that dirty old hut? That's he's fair. He's got loads of cash. <laughs> you know? I'm fine with that. Um, what was really interesting, too, I guess, because being on these sets and stuff were really... The, if you haven't seen the um, the bad lip reading, seagull, like Seagull's uh, music video for this it's they do yoda and right it's all, and it's just all about how there's seagulls everywhere have you not seen it <laughs> i think oh, so we'll watch it after this because it's one of the funniest things in the world they've done that three music videos doing bad lip reading from star wars and they're all so hilarious they the just, same people yeah it's it's a <laughs> the company's called back bad lip reading right and they've done all the movies they did they did all the twilight movies and stuff like that and like it's so <laughs> funny all the star wars movies all the twilight movies right like games like every nfl season like anything that has people like the trump debates it's so funny what like they can get out of the lip reading and the lip sync is perfect to what they're saying it's not like they're just making shit up well so, they're obviously making shit up but like it's just it's, but it goes with the lips yeah, exactly yeah like they thought some stuff up mm-hmm, unlike sure. us I like this. Um, we did mention it before on the radio plays. Uh, Yoda is actually played by John Lithgow. Oh, that's right. I and love that man. God, I love that man. Yeah. He, I would love to. I feel like he would be so pleasant to meet. I think so, too. I think or he would just be awful. So, no, I feel like. I don't know. I can't. I think I he would be see, great, too. I can't see. Awful. I think he's a really humble guy. I think like at the really inappropriate time. He would be. He would just shut it down. Right. Like he wouldn't even have time to be like, rude. Forget it. Would just it be yeah. Like, Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. He's going down to visit Frank Oz finally. Uh, gee. So why is Yoda here? Is Yoda hiding? Yoda, if you remember in the prequels, which you don't, since you asked, uh, <laughs> he um, he maybe I do. He it's puts for yeah. the others. Oh, this is for the, yeah, this is for the people who don't know. Uh, he puts himself in exile yes. after losing to uh, Darth, Darth Sidious. Sidious. And so, yeah, he is in hiding and then his what a little, sore loser, right? Well, you got to do what you got to do to stay, you know, keep the Jedi way alive. Is his planet even like this? Like, it's probably like, this is his probably planet. a dump for him. No, he's probably down with this. Imagine you, you actually see Yoda's planet in episode nine. It's and it, beautiful. No, it looks like a big, um, what's the name of the place? The hedonism, the big swingers. Yes. Resort. Yeah. He's just, those little guys are just fucking Bunch everywhere. Of naked Yoda's all over. Dirty old green bunny rabbits. So they made a bunch of changes, I guess, in the uh, theatrical version. They really wanted to make sure you knew it wasn't Darth Vader. So his lightsaber was orange. and his. As a kid, I had a problem with this scene. Yeah. This scene freaked the shit out of me. It was. It it is something. See, you can even see it's still not even as brilliant red as normal. Uh, I just think his voice is all like his breathing is off. I just think because of the way, you know, the, the choppiness here, that's, you know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm now 
they would call yeah. me an adult. Yeah. It's arguably not if you the saw most... me from the waist down. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, it's arguably the most violent moment that happens in the original. Trilogy. But you know the 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 way this scene is, it kind of has a dream quality to it. Yeah. Suddenly, with this choppy kind yeah. of a duh, 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 right there, it gives you away too, right? That it's a thing. But at first, yeah. I thought I thought he was there. Yeah. Well, as a kid, yeah, because well, I didn't understand their little wipes and you know, yeah, the four, well, the, and, oh, and whatever, the idea of what the symbolism and the fucking this and that. And that was kind of another reason that he comes here too, is because he's there's a, he knows there's a strong dark side thing, and he's he like challenges himself with it. I would love to be like a, just a Tie Fighter patroller, just flying around. With I know, weapons. man. I'm gonna go as a Tie Fighter. I think to Comic Con. Nice. Oh, I can't even fit my costume in the door. My favorites. We got all of the amazing uh, guys here. This is Boss. Look at this guy. And Zuckus. And Get Boba your big Fett. nasty toenails out of my face, bro. Yeah, I know. Don't be a dickhead about it. You think that guy molts? See. Oh, there's Zuckus and oh, uh, these guys. Yeah, he's all good. There's such great characters and you barely oh, see them. There's IG eighty six. There's the guy. Is that who you're going or as? IG eighty eight, I mean. Him? No, nope, no. Nope. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought you were gonna say Boba Fett. No. I don't want to be covered. It's too hot. I don't want to be all covered up like face mask and all this stuff like that. I have no interest. Hmm. And I like, okay, inter- well, who is it? Okay, don't say like, yet, but no. And I, and I also like interacting with people. If people are going to come up and say, Hey, nice costume. I don't want to be masked and go, thank you. Or, or, you or, just or, flip right? them the bird and you keep one. They're like, Oh, that's Boba Fett yeah. for you. Like if you, when you go, you will realize the one thing that sucks the most is there's 99 Deadpools. Oh and, yeah, and the range of costumes go from like pajamas to good costumes, right? And it's just like, hey, I'm gonna act up, like, uh, like here's I'm me and a chimichanga, <laughs> and a chimichanga, and it's just like <laughs> because everybody's like, oh, I'm so good at being Deadpool. It's just and like, they all think it. It's the most. To, I want to me, see it's the, the girl. I like the girls, like Power Girl, there and like when ton, you see like there weren't a ton of great girls in our thing. To find the best ones, go to San Diego Comic Con's website and just like click through them, right? They're all there. Yeah, some of those costumes are fucking... I saw a Groot on one of those that was mm-hmm. like, holy there was, shit, man. It was like Groot was there. Groot was... Uh, they had a Groot at our Comic-Con, and he was like a solid nine feet tall. He was on mini stilts. And it was like, Sweet. That's what I'm talking really about. You want some guy in his pajama pants just saying Deadpool quotes. Oh, man. I'm Deadpool out of the gear, aren't I, cheeky? You know? It's very fun no. to see the range, though, of some people who are like, I'm going to really do it, and they're just not good at anything. So then it's like they're just wearing a cardboard box that says Star Wars on it. <laughs> He's like, what I are you? Love I'm Star Wars. That would be the best. God, that's what my. Dude. I am Star Wars. That's what I've said. Do you know my most? Well, one the, scene, a character. Yeah, no, no, just no, the Star concept. Star Wars. <laughs> the concept. He's like, so if you say Luke Skywalker, that's me. If you say Dagobah, that's also me. <laughs> see, you didn't see him doing this yes. with the younglings in the prequels. Nope. R two D two must be so fucking bored. Yeah, I know, right? God, he's like I'm covered in mud. I'm he doesn't even have out. hands to jerk it with. I know. His little that's like, why he's got C three POs there for him. Um... Like, <laughs> Is that a potato as well? Is that new? No, that's no, new. it's not new. It's a rock. It's fine. It's just it's a new rock. Calm down. Lucas was like, "This rock is not. <laughs> it's not. I'm not feeling this rock. No, it doesn't scream Dagobah. It does not scream Dagobah. Concentrate." <laughs> Oh, he's like, fuck, I left my sandwich in there, Yoda. Fucking Yoda sandwich. Look at all the little squirrely hairs on him. <laughs> That's a cool shot. Yeah. That could be a cool, right there, t-shirt. Nice. Boom. Boom. Like what, he should be wearing a t-shirt? That should be a no, t-shirt? No, that could be on a t-shirt, oh, man. okay. We should start doing that. I'm not going to start I'm going to remember these t-shirt. scenes. We're going to go to that t-shirt place and we'll get all types of the made up. We're not going back to that t-shirt place. No, fuck those guys, man. That costs way too much goddamn money. Oh, I hope that when Mr. Riches wears the shirt, people are like, man, that's the coolest shirt I've ever seen. I hope that's true, right? How did you get two of the ugliest motherfuckers onto one t-shirt? Why? Where's the other one? (laughs) It's not me. (laughs) Yeah, he's looking good. See, this to me, it's very much it reminds me of the Matrix scene where it's basically you can do this. Like once somebody tells me, oh, yeah, by the way, this is totally a thing you're able to do. Then I have the confidence to do it. They're like, oh, they said I could do it. Solid. He doesn't and even right? believe he's like, you should yeah, be able to do that. <laughs> he's like, that he's actually been, doing it. That would have been the best. He actually successfully oh, does yeah. it. He's like, motherfucker, I did not think <laughs> that was going to happen. shit. Right there. That's the scene with his hand out. Yeah. Dude, I remember that. I got to remember that. <laughs> 
So this movie, it was the number one movie of uh, 1980. No shit. Yeah. It was number one. I'm just looking now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It was... Uh, 11 out of 13 weeks at number one. Wow. So what, what's and Black it, Panther right now? Five? Six? Five, yeah. It's at five. Oh, that's a big deal. So this one was like, holy shit. What was that yeah. against? Uh, let's find out. So, but anyways, it was number one for the first two weeks, number three of the third week. Then it was number one for the next uh, nine straight weeks. Then it went down to number two. So I think that's when it left. Right. It was just like, okay, we've, we've proved our point. Okay, we're leaving. We're on. Um, Sometimes the party goes on for too long and you're like, I don't be top dog at this party anymore. Oh. I'm going. So opening weekend, it came out the same time as The Shining. Ooh. Hey. Like, to know to show you how few hey. movies. Well, they shot this on the same that, studio. There too. you go. Yep. That's I was like, I knew there, there was some kind of a Shining, mm-hmm. a Star Wars. Yeah. Actually, an interesting thing about that too, I had read. Um, Stephen King visited the set of The Shining and then came over and visited this set, met Irving Kirshner and had conversations. Years later, he goes on to write It, who features a character named Mrs. Kirsch, who talks a bit like Yoda. No way. So And and, and he Kirshner's ended up name. doing Dreamcatcher. Didn't you say he did Dreamcatcher? Yes, he did do Dreamcatcher, yeah. which, which Lawrence Kasdan wrote. And I directed. guess you just let Stephen King in at that point, right? You're like, hey, Stephen yeah. King just is hanging around. You're like, fucking hey, bring him in. Well, that was like what happened with Force Awakens. They were so secretive, yet every person had been on the set. Yeah. It was like, I think just Everybody you but me. you. Yeah. That's, oh, dude, I wasn't supposed to tell you. Check these oh, pictures out. Son of a bitch. Me on set. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I kill you. You were on car plot? <laughs> yeah. Um, wasn't supposed to tell you. Nothing would make me, honestly, nothing would make me more upset in my entire life. <laughs> I know, that's why I said it. Well, man, I really man. wish that was the truth. Damn it, uh, I could unveil it right now. No, on you know what? Live I would, TV. I would, it's not live. I don't oh. know how to explain to you any better how live is. Oh. Oh. But, so yeah, this is. It's live to the camera. Mm hmm. We actually missed my favorite part. Oh, we the Schmoopy. No, it's that bit where he's talking about how the force is all around us. And he's like, luminous beings, are we? Not this crude matter. And like say that it. sort of thing. Say the whole thing right now. I'm not going to say the whole thing. Do I it. Because I don't, I don't do it justice. And I don't want to. You don't even know, bro. I do, oh, don't, don't reverse psychology me. You should... I'm way better at this. <laughs> oh, we got a little popple crackle yeah. there. I'm too close. Well, don't laugh because I'm... I'm so awesome. I'm so... <laughs> Don't tell me how to live my life. I, I will tell you how to live your life. Who's doing this? What? R2. Yeah. R2's like, dude, look at how easy this is. <laughs> That's the God, he's like, you're not even paying attention, Luke. He's the most powerful. <laughs> Everything that has gone on, even yeah. all the emperors, <laughs> he's the main it's, bad guy. It's R2. <laughs> yep. and nobody, nobody can wrap their heads around it. Just like new, huh, Luke? Yep. Like, this, Woo. now, I mean, for what it's worth, this is a better religion than most <laughs> religions. Not Scientology. You, true. Well, I think Scientology took a lot from this. And I don't need my money. Volcanoes. Anyways, I'm glad somebody should yeah. take it. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to spend it on drugs. But like just these like little bits of, and like even like the idea of when people die and stuff, they're like, don't mourn them. He's like, they've become the world again. Like be happy. Yeah, they're back. That. See, that's what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Funerals are, oh, Jesus. That looked like a. That looked like it hurt the knees. Yeah, like yeah, totally. Like they're still great. That's probably what he's like. Up, he's like, why did oh, you make me do that? Oh man, it he's like, yeah, what the shit? Oh, there goes another. One. See this? Who wants to work for this guy? I know. Is it too late? Yeah. He's like, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's too late. I'm already here. Or do you think yeah. before even in the academy, they're like, oh fuck, this guy's dick. I'm gonna like, have to be doing it. well, it was basically if you wanted, like, people were kind of probably conscribed into it too, right? They probably they, they probably like, took whole towns, yeah. forced whole towns, yeah. in, and you were born here. Yeah, wasn't yeah. Finn born there? Finn was born, in, well, he was, I don't know where he was born, but he was taken into the system. Right. Like so, some, so he was there for a long time. Yeah, he was there from like baby age. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then just trained. Bummer. Like, well, they're pretty friggin' big, these things. What are their dimensions yeah. of? Do, do you have the real dimensions of one of these the things? The real dimensions, what are they supposed I to don't be? honestly know, but I mean, each one would probably carry like 10,000 people. It's, they're, it looks like, it's big, it's larger it's like than a city. A, it's larger than any cruise ship. Like the Queen Mary two would be like half the size. I th- of this yeah, movie. I think Queen Mary two would be way smaller than that for some yeah. reason. Well, but I'm just picturing because I mean this thing's about. Uh, I think they said the Millennium Falcon's about sixty five feet, so use okay. that as some kind of scale. It's on like the tip of it, kind of right. So I mean, Todd's doing some arm math right now. <laughs> One, two, three. Well, I'm like if that's the tip, yeah. Just the tip. Okay, then how many across? Maybe four, but then it would no, kind of go six, eight, twelve, right? Because it keeps yeah. getting wider and wider. Yeah. We need math. We need we need Star we Wars need math. math. I mean, it's probably something that we could easily look up. I bet it is. Let me let me hey Google it. Yeah. Hey Google. 
was not doing it. Hello, Fuck Joe. Me. Hey, Google. Stop asking me Star Wars related things, Joe. Oh, it's not hey, Google. It's okay, Google. I fucked it up. How big is a Star Destroyer in Star Wars? Oh, it didn't take it. How big is a Star Destroyer in Star Wars? According to Wikipedia, at 1,600 meters long, Imperial class Star Destroyers are armed with turbo lasers, ion cannons, and tractor beam projectors. Okay, Google. Thanks, baby. No, thank you, sweet cheeks. You can call me Google Assistant. Oh, me too. <laughs> no <laughs> shit. Okay, so there's what did she say? One thousand six hundred meters. Yes. So it's one point six that? kilometers, which is like one point six kilometers long. Like it's like it's over a mile long. Wow, that's way bigger than yeah. a fucking uh, cruise ship. Yes. Who? I don't. But Ooh. like, but I don't. I've never been on a big cruise. Yeah. Ship, well, so my like, the ships I'm on are about nine hundred feet. Okay. I cannot see one of those being that much longer. They're taller and they're fat. Yeah. But yeah. maybe a th- even 2,000 feet ain't no fucking yeah. mile. Mm-hmm. Woo. I really like this ship, too. This is Boba Fett's ship, the Slave One. Hey, that looks like something from something else. Like maybe <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy or Thanks. something. Like uh, Probably. It looked like Star-Lord's face in the back. Like with all, with the, I, with, I, with I've the seen boosters. that thing somewhere else. Oh, now he's got the coolers. Yeah. Did you see the, the new Avengers out. trailer? I did. That was really cool. I like when Whoa. I like when Star Lord was like, "Okay, your idea was not good to as Tony Stark is like, yeah. how about you let me make the ideas and then so our ideas will be better." Like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Your idea sucks." It just like I, it's it's really good. That was. I hope perfect. the whole thing isn't about fucking Tony Stark's man. No. Well, I, I re- saw him front and center on the poster, and I was like, "Oh my god, come on!" Like all of these movies, they always need like as as much as you don't think it, a movie would need it. A movie always needs kind of a central guy. I know Not that it's going like, to be Tony Stark. Well, of course, it, all, it has been the whole time. Why would they change it? Now? Oh my God! There's so many characters. Yeah. You'd think it would be Guardians of the Galaxy would be close closer to Thanos than anybody else. Yeah. So maybe the leading would be them, but no, of course it's going to be he's after Tony Stark's arc reactor or yeah. whatever. Well, it's because they have more of the uh, Ray, uh, the stones. The stones. Because they have Vision, and then they've got uh, Doctor Strange has one. Thor has what? Well, Thor and uh, no, Loki they gave have them one. to the. They gave theirs no, to the, the Tesseract. They, Loki's got it. Yeah, now. Now I thought they were supposed to give it to the collectors. Got some? No, Didn't the they tw- give some to John C. Riley? Uh, no, they gave nothing to. They hid it there originally, or no? They were going to hide it. They did the one there, but I think the collector got that one, and then he also got the. Um, the ether from Thor. Right. But the Tesseract was still in Asgard when they left. That's right. And we then, just saw but, Ragnarok. That was sitting yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's oh, there. yeah. I like that scene where Captain America like grabs his hand. Oh, well, so yeah. It was and good. He's like, but it looks like it's kind of, ooh, he's surprising Thanos, I think. You can yeah. see Thanos. Because like, I watched the preview like 18 times yeah. in a row. And then I was like watching Thanos' face instead of <laughs> his hand. And I was like, oh, he's kind of like. <laughs> You know, he's just going to yeah. swat him with his other hand yeah, or something. But it, still, it, he's kind of like... He's like, I can beat this guy, but it's still a slight challenge. Yeah. So, um, Cloud City was actually a runoff idea from the uh, first Star Wars movie. It was supposed to be uh, like a cl- the Cloud City was going to be an Imperial jail. It's probably where originally they were going to get Leia from. Instead of the Death Star. They probably would have went there and then went back and then right. went to the Death Star. Uh, but the... Um, but then they just, I think they just decided to keep it simple and they made it all about the Death Star, right? I like Cloud City. Cloud City is really yeah. like an interesting idea. Like that's one of the hard things with these movies, right? Is like, what are you going to do? Because, okay, you've done the desert planet. You've done the snow planet. You've now done like a couple of like tree planets because you've got Kashyyyk and you've got this, yep. right? And Kashyyyk was actually in. Which one's uh, Kashyyyk? Kashyyyk is the one that Chewbacca's from. And you see it in episode three, but you originally see it in the Christmas special. That's why in Fanboys, when they say what planet is Chewbacca from, they're like, they don't talk about that in the movies. But he knew the answer. It's because right. it's, in the, it's in the Christmas special. It's in the Christmas special. Mm-hmm. They eventually go there in one of the prequels, though, don't they? Or is that just a battle on yeah, in the epi- big Wookiee episode, battle? Episode three, there's yeah. a Wookiee battle, yeah. And it was actually, like, well, again, they fucked up in a couple spots because they had one of them do, like, the Tarzan yell. Like was, yeah. oh, they always do those yeah. little and things just like, and that guy that has the same scream yeah. in like every movie yeah but oh the Wilhelm yeah but, <laughs> but, but like and, but that one's more of like a film 
tradition. Right. Those other ones are just nerd, like those movie nerds going, this will be funny. People think this is funny. And then nobody finds it funny. And they're like, oh, never mind. Not even them. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, that wasn't a good idea. Yeah. Well, they, like, at the moment, they thought it was funny because they right. were really tired. Like, <laughs> so, um, uh, Lando Calrissian was originally offered uh, to uh, Yafet Kodo. No way. From, uh, uh, what's it called? Running Man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I can't remember which Bond movie was he in. Ah, uh, Fred. I, ju- I just saw yeah. it recently. Um, I don't know. I won't there he it. is. That's who I want to be. Lando? No, behind Lando. Buddy with the Lobot. head thing on? Yes. Hey. Because I want to do the head thing. Oh, uh, that's good. But there I want to get one with the flashing. I, I want thought you wanted to be Lando. I was like, nobody's going to handle that well, bro. No. <laughs> hey, I, it, all I need is a mustache, and I look exactly like it's him. True. It's true. That is very true. But yeah, so he was uh, that. And then originally he was um, he was designed, or like the concept of him, was that he was in hiding. He was one of the original clones from the Clone Wars. And so he was, which really would have fucked up the prequels for them because then they would have had to do uh, like animated young, right? Like, young Billy D. Williams yeah. running around everywhere. I like that. Those cartoon shows of Star Wars are awesome. Mm-hmm. Rebels and. Yeah, Rebels just finished, actually. Wicked. I need to watch up. that. I should get the whole thing and watch it, man. It's so yeah, good. That's the way to do it to me. Oh, just get man. Get it all done in one go. One and done, baby. One and done. What, what, what is in the, those? What, are, what is that around Chewbacca there? What is it's that? Band- gun, gun clips? Yeah, it's a bandolier of like his ammo. Space ammo? Yeah. Spammo? Yeah, for his bow caster. Oh. Um, so Billy D. Williams, this is one of my favorite things. Billy D. Williams was obviously Harvey Dent in Batman, Tim Burton's Batman, but he never got to play Two-Face. He thought he was going to in Batman Forever and then got the news when he was sitting there waiting for the call that somebody else was going to play him and he was pissed. But now he plays Harvey Dent. He was in Lego Batman movie and he played Two-Face. Oh, he was? Yeah, oh, so, well, that's funny. It goes around, eh? Yeah, exactly. There you go. And, and you he's know, still playing Lando. He's the voice of 30 Lando. 30 years later. He's the uh, he's the uh, voice of Lando in Lego Star Wars and uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two. He's probably prior to this, he was best known for playing Gale Sayers in the movie Brian Song, which probably up to the time was the only movie a man could. <gasps> I know, ooh, sexy. Ooh. But he was like the only movie a man could cry to before Rudy came out because mm-hmm. that was the one where Brian. What about Old Yeller? No, are men allowed to cry? Old Yeller, you gotta no, pretend. You it. have to be the one who shoots the dog, right? Right, and then. Um, he was uh, he was in Fanboys playing the judge. He's uh, he wrote an episode of the Jeffersons too. Like oh my god, credit. they just blew him apart. Mm-hmm. I liked I again I liked that it gives you the whole tone of this place right away. You're like, what the fuck's happening? Yeah, what? If something's going on here. Let me tell you. This is my least favorite line delivery of this movie coming up. You'll hear it when it comes. You must complete the trading. Uh, it's not this line. It's it's coming, but like the vision is of his sister. No, but how did I would die if I don't? You know, like like it's just I don't know. There's so like a weird like drum thing to it. Like but how did I would die if I don't? It's like you could turn that into like a metal beat. Right. I will die if I don't. But how did I will die if I don't? But how did I will die if I don't? And just like you go and then oh, Todd's strangling me. <laughs> Here it goes. That sounds and like it, something. That sounds like Kalima. Yeah. You know, it sounds like that. That's what you're gonna say when you murder your family. To, hey, do you see my family around? <laughs> do you have a lot of blood in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, oh, look at. You like, go for a glow hue like that, mm-hmm. you know, man. When I come back, come this on. was. I want to be gross, like in Pet Cemetery. For fuck the glow. That'd be amazing. You actually still deteriorate like a zombie. Yeah, but you have this nice glow his, about you. Yeah. His one eye is hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> just like he's just constantly puking up his own entrails. <laughs> so he's like talking. He's also like, glowing. He's like, it is you. They <laughs> guts looks like someone out of the gates of hell. Yeah, I feel I, I'm so upset now. I'm glad that we're now in a situation where actors don't feel above these kind of parts. Like with Anthony Hopkins I know. in uh, like in Thor, Thor and, and and like just all over the place. You, you know have why? These people and big directors too. The same thing. Like Kenneth Branagh did the first Thor. Because unlike these old like Alec Guinness, Sir Lawrence Olivier guys, yeah. they've realized that to be an actor is to be a whore. And yeah. there's what's the difference? Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to pay me a big fat paycheck to be in your stupid cartoon movie where I stand in front of a green screen? You fucking A. No, but to me, it's 
More but than that. I kid. Yeah. But they understand this is a medium now. All yeah. this crazy shit now. Cartoons. Yeah. You want to get work, you do this. But it's, but it's, it's not they're good. If, it's not yet. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not even if just if you want work. Right. They're good. It's, <clears> it's you can do. It's they finally realize that people are taking the making of these as seriously as making another film. Yes. Right. It's like it doesn't like because there's a puppet and it doesn't mean that it's a joke. Well, yeah. Well, and then you got look at the scripts now, right? So these brilliant Marvel brilliant cinematography there with the lighting. Eh? These. These uh, uh, these scripts are awesome. The Marvel mm-hmm. scripts are awesome. The characters are awesome, mm-hmm. and people are just jumping to be out on these movies. Guaranteed. Yeah. That's why you get like John C. Riley in a little role, or Glenn mm-hmm. Close, or Anthony Hopkins in just a little piece of fucking yeah. you know Thor because these movies kick ass. Benicio del Toro in a in mm-hmm. both a Marvel and a and a Star Wars movie. In oh, he was for so like three good. Was that Rogue One? No, that he it was, was in Last Jedi. What? Was Last Jedi? Oh, he was He's awesome! The, the I hope he picker. comes back. I think he'll. Come, I he'll really be back dug tonight. his character, and I thought more was going to happen with him. I thought he was going to be screwing them over in the end, but no, he was just kind of like, you know what? Yeah. I'm so in between this. And... I'm just going to live. Yeah, and he's like, I'm on. I'm on the side where I where I live tomorrow. Yeah, but did, did he fuck them over? He, well, he, he they got fucked over because of him, but it was really just a matter of look. I wasn't really on your side. Right. He's like he was I kind of a thing. dick. I kind of liked him though. Yeah. I, he'll be he'll be back he'll be given the chance kind he'll of like, redeem himself kind of like Han at the end of Star Wars where he leaves and they're like oh what the fuck he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't so cool after all and then he comes really, back I'm and back I couldn't say I had nowhere to go yeah. where am I going I don't know yeah. Death Star blew up all the planets <laughs> yeah. what, what's going on here so oh, look at these guys. This is Warwick Davis. There's an, uh, Warwick no, Davis as Warwick the upper Davis. pile of C-3PO. No, Warwick Davis had not started acting yet at this point. Whatever. That was the next movie he started. Warwick Davis was in Willow. These are the Ugnots, though, if your drinking game's still going. What is it? Yeah, Ugnots. My drinking game is always still going, especially when you don't have to drink, so it doesn't cost me anything. Yes. That um, droid that you just saw was one of the ones, you know, that were all lined up when they picked out R2-D2 and C-3PO right. in the first one. Probably know all their individual the names, arms. too. Yeah. You know, it's a good thing he was fucking paying attention. See, Fuck, man, C three people would be gone. Yeah, he's sitting there. He's like, "You guys and your horny human burritos yeah. are just." <laughs> they apparently this scene had a different version that they shot, where like he comes, she comes in dressed like that, and Han's like, "You should wear girl clothes more often." <laughs> and then they like kiss and stuff like that. He's like, "You right. can see it in the DVD extras and." Oh, he's so char. Like, I would make out with him in a heartbeat. Does he tell later on how he got here? Is he the mayor of Cloud City or what? He's not the mayor. He's the administrator of the mine. He's the resident sexy rogue. Yeah, like he's like this. Cloud City is the big, is is the uh, place where the miners are and stuff like that. And he's the administrator of this place. Oh, there they are. The shift is over. I have an Ugnot toy. They all look like... (laughs) Of course you do. They all look like Warwick Davis in the first Harry Potter. Yeah, totally. Totally. Before they simplified Professor Ugnuts. What would you call them? Lugnuts? Ugnots. Oh, yeah. Look at I like I I honestly think Chewbacca's gay based on that walk. He's kind of like ooh eggnog egg, nuts. Eggnogs. Put your nuts in the eggnog. You how, get one of those guys. How excited for you? Just look at Lando for a minute, and how excited are you for Donald Glover to be taking that role? Awesome. Like he just, I'm could so not excited to see Solo because like I want to see the early. Yeah. Well, you I, know, oh you motherfucker! I want to see that, but I also want to see like I want to see Lando and, and I want to see their early adventures, and I want to see Ron Howard's vision. I heard. <clears throat> I read that they were like 80% done the movie. They were, but they ended up reshooting. More no, than no, half. no, no. Yeah. So when, when yeah. Ron Howard came in and he looked at the footage of what that Disney wanted, he essentially shot the whole movie again yeah. in the shortest period of time, dude, like ever. Yeah. And I can't wait to see. I wish there was a double whammy cut, like the Zack Snyder Justice League yeah. cut that nobody. People, why are they even talking about this? Well, people, I actually got into it. I, this was my like, fault why? for even bringing it up. But they're like, why didn't they make the Snyder cut? There isn't a Snyder fuck, cut. Who cares anyway? And they're like, he said that. And I'm like, he shot a lot of footage, but they never made a cut. Yeah, but even movie. if this is to say like, like if there was any inkling that it could or mm-hmm. should or would be a good movie, yeah. then yes, you want to see the Snyder. People are saying it like, oh, well, they, they fucked over Zack Snyder. We need to see the Snyder cut and that'll be so awesome. Yeah. No, look at Batman versus Superman. Look at the Justice League. Look at all the DC movies he's directed. Look, They're shit. Yeah, and that was the, that's my other thing too is nobody really shit. Was, nobody was on top going like, these are the best movies yeah. ever being made. So why did they think it was going to be better? I think a fucking Whedon, kid. Well, Joss Whedon actually made a good one. 
Yeah, well, he, not, he did what he could with it yeah. in the time that he had. No, no, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking he made Avengers. Oh, so fuck, So he yeah. actually had something to hang his hat on. Whereas, like, yeah, Snyder, they gave him all these friggin' movies and none of the, I'm sorry, but I, I just watched Batman versus Superman again. Oh, my the, God. Because I, I honestly was like, you know what? I'm being too biased. <laughs> and I was like, I'm You're not I'm being the, biased no, enough. No, but I was like, I'm the Marvel guy. And I was like, I probably didn't give it its fair, its due. Well, the first time I watched it, I kind of burned through it. And I'm like, I'm going to sit down and really watch it. And I watched this movie and I'm like, it looks like, a, like, you know, the dreams you have where you're like, so yeah, you and me were there, but you weren't you, you were somebody else. Right. And then we were on a spaceship and they're like, how do we get to the spaceship? I don't know. And it just keeps going. And that was the entire movie. Yeah. And then everything was so easily resolved when it needed to be. We're fighting! Martha, what? We're friends now! None of like, it made any sense. You think that you're going to be the world's dipshit. greatest detective and then believe that it was Superman's fault? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, exactly. The, whole, the logic of the characters was ludicrous. Like, Anyways, while, while he's here, yeah. that guy should have been played by b the bald guy that's in everything. Yeah. yeah. You know the guy I'm talking about? Yeah. He was in, like, Masters of the Universe and... Oh, uh, uh, J James Tolkien. Yes. Yes. No, he... Um, this guy, though, that's like John Hollis. He's also in a Bond movie. He was also, I think, in Never Say Never Again. Oh, no, he was in For Your Eyes Only. Uh. So, yeah, it's, it's really funny. I think there's three guys. Uh, the guy, Jeremy Bullock, who is in... Uh, Boba Fett's suit. He's not the voice of Boba Fett, but he's in the suit. Is uh, he was also in For Your Eyes Only? <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, it's funny too, uh, Jeremy Bullock, because he uh, he was never the voice. Somebody else was the voice in the original version, and then they replaced him because he's the clone. He's Jango Fett's clone, uh, so he had Jango Fett's voice in the new version. So you they think they'll him. do that in the movies, or leave that for the cartoon to handle? I'm sorry. What do you mean? I would love if they did like Clone Wars stuff in movie form. Like, well, go back even more. Oh, prequel to the prequel, bro. Clone I Wars. See. I think they'll probably, at the very least, they'll leave it for the. Break. Yeah, they'll leave it for the. I think that Clone Wars storyline is just fucking awesome. I do. It was good. I dig it. I like it a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah, no, it was quite good. It's uh, So, anyways, the uh, Tamara Morrison is the guy who was Jango Fett, who's now the voice of uh, this. Uh, he was in Barbed Wire Speed 2, Episode 2 and 3. He was in Moana. Now that you Barbed it up. Wire? Yeah. He With was Pam? Yeah. But he was in Moana. He was the king in Moana. No way. And he's in Aquaman That's coming up. That's fucked up. Right? The fuck does that work out? Well, he's Maori, so he's he's a, like a New Zealander guy. And like he's... Oh, you know what? I did in you're watching that movie too. I said, man, these accents sound New Zealand. Yeah. That's or South it. African. They kind of yeah. sound like Kiwi. It's kind of a well, weird... Well, they're supposed to be Kiwi. They're supposed to be like native Maori, like tribesmen and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, That's a um, good one. Um, and Jeremy Bullock, who again was the body of Boba Fett, he was in The Spy Who Loved Me. He was an octopusy, so he's got all kinds of uh, uh, Bond stuff. He was in Swing Kids, did tons of TV. Uh, and then uh, Jason Wingreen is another act, another guy. I don't didn't see all his roles, but he was the original voice of Boba Fett that right. they switched to match up the continuity. Which I didn't have a problem with. People were mad about, oh, he's not the original voice. Who cares? He had like five lines in the entire yeah, trilogy. Yeah, ruined the whole thing for me. Yeah. And he's still cool as shit. He's the only person who was de who debuted in the Christmas special. Who? Boba Fett. Boba Fett was in the Christmas special. Oh, he did. This, and he was actually his toy came out before. Uh, before Anybody the movie even came seen out. him? Before, well, I mean, people who saw the Christmas special saw him, but nobody who saw like. But it was still way before. He it was like a special uh, one you had to like mail in for. And originally, he was supposed to have the firing rocket. But then one of the Battlestar Galactica toys had a fire rocket. A kid choked and died, so they just nixed the fire. Oh, uh, that's out. One but, kid, eh? Yeah. But if you watch all of the uh, documentaries and stuff on like old retro toys and things like that, they talk about it, and that everybody says people come out of the woodwork to say, "Oh, I've got the one. I like there was one oh, that yeah. was firing. Yeah. I have the prototype." There were like three prototypes that were actually got made that looked very little like like the finished product and like they're in the hands of like they're already in people's hands they're known where they are why do they have to freeze him how far is the emperor well it's not about it's not about how far he is it's about what he can do while they're traveling ah, right it's like you are fighting a guy who, who might be able to right right I hear you. Yeah. No, I, that makes a lot of sense, actually. This, this device and what they end up doing with it and stuff, I think is actually really smart filmmaking for what they were doing. Because, I mean, we'll talk more about it with Harrison Ford. Not, well, not with Harrison Ford, but we'll talk about Harrison Ford. Right. When the time comes, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself and blow my nut. But <laughs> it's it like, such a pretty city. Pretty city. <clears throat>
Oh, shit's going down yeah. now. Another rocking uh, Lando Calrissian, you fucking turncoat. The sets on this one, like every set they built. I think this was the most sets they built for any of the movies. And uh, there's so many. Cool I do dig ones, this eh? set a lot. There is a lot of really yeah. cool sets on here. Yeah. yeah. They said this set was so hot that um, it looks uh, hot. Yeah. That like uh, Chewbacca's uh, costume started to just stink because he's like just sweating in it. It's oh, God. Like, imagine taking was, that off and then have to put it back on after lunch or whatever. Like you would. Oh. Well, you don't take it off. You'd take off your hat, your head during oh, lunch. Oh, God. But, you'd take just wring that shit out. Like, just imagine how the face would, it would smell like. That's method acting, because I have a feeling Chewbacca stinks. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, that's it. it. Yeah. Apparently, I didn't know when I was doing some reading today, apparently Han Solo was, as a kid, was supposed to be in episode three. He was really? going to be, when they were on Kashyyyk, he was going to be, as a kid, ah. on Kashyyyk, and he was going to discover, like, the location of uh, Utapau, or they were... Uh, uh, Obi-Wan has to go and stuff like that. So and like you were going to find out that he was basically orphaned and being raised by Chewbacca. Oh, you got to watch out with those kind of things. Cause then oh, later stretching. on you're like, why yeah. wouldn't you say that? Yeah. Like this... in thing, like in Lord of the Rings, it's like, why wouldn't yeah. a gr- uh, buddy, the elf t- say to, you know, yeah. Hey, I partied with your old man years ago yeah. or not your old man, but you yeah, know, your yeah. uncle. Yeah, exactly. Why, uh, we went on all these events. Why wouldn't you ever say it, you know? No, but that was the thing. And they did a really good job with that. If you go back and watch The Hobbit, Legolas never interacts with Bo- with uh, oh, Bilbo. That's probably He's, why. They don't even see each other ever. The oh. only time they come close is when they're in the barrels going down the uh, right. river. And he jumps over them, but he never sees. They never even, they never lock eyes. Oh, I was probably too busy trying to induce vomiting. Probably. With my ticket stub. I wish I wish they would have... They, they could have made potentially two... They could have made I one good movie. I wanted to see friggin' or Buddy's potentially version. two good movies. Guillermo? Yeah, no, man. Because you, I, I feel like you would have seen the exact same three people you see in all those things. You would have seen the hand eyes. Jones. Yeah. Adam Doug, Jones would have been Doug there Jones. all skinnied up with makeup all day long. Yeah, Doug Jones would have played yeah. Bayorn or something. Um, so the, he I, does have that same style like, yeah, all the time, right? It's always the, yeah, I, I can, that's the problem. I can tell one coming from a million miles away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the and not that they're bad. Like he's no, a good but you always but know just, like a Guillermo monster when you yeah. see it. You and, know? You and you can't do that when you're dealing with something that's. Did you see the shape of water? water? No, I haven't. No, I don't know if I ever will. Oh no, that would be something so, awesome to get in your rec yeah. room. That you can buy that actually. It's like ten thousand dollars off from Sideshow Toys. We could make one from friggin' tin foil. I, well, I couldn't. Well, just the, keep ordering subs. <laughs> yeah, those subs. Wrap you in tin foil, stick it to the wall, and it'll smell like meatballs. So yeah. it's win-win. But they did this because he wanted to be killed off in the movie. He basically said, "He's like, what else is there for Han to do? Han's not a Jedi. Han's well, not he a always Jedi. wants to be killed off. Well, for no, but that was sakes. well, that was well. This is where it started, though. This was the point. Mm. He's like, and he he literally said he was like just." coming at it from a real point of view. He's just like, what else is there left for him to do? And then, so he's like, well, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to kill you. We'll do this to you. And then if you have a change of heart or like, we'll talk about it later and we'll talk about the story and stuff when it, when we're there. And then if you want to come back, then we can revive you. And it's simple. It's a rescue mission to come get you. If not, then you're frozen and it's done. Like it's just over for you. I have a feeling right? that the memo that hit his table also had a lot of cash stuck into that uh, uh, little, uh, no, he did. As far as I know, he didn't get a raise because they were all contracted to do the movies. Nice shot. So he wouldn't have gotten anything to not do it or he wouldn't have gotten anything extra to come to mm. it. But, the, um, but it was the idea that they were like, hey, you're going to be the leader of this thing now. And it was like, oh, they gave him something to do. But then in, when the uh, sequels came, J.J. said, yeah, no, it's time. Like, it, I think it's time for that to actually occur. You've got to make yeah. the sacrifice, right? So... This is cool too, just the idea it's of the too bad thing. we're not gonna get there until next year. Yeah. But the sound effect when he comes out of that thing is so killer. Yeah. Like that like squish. Yeah, like that weird uh mm-hmm. <clears throat> There oh, he goes. So good. But yeah, the I love you, I know line. Uh, it was always said, and I believed up until today, that it was an improvised line where they did it as written, but then they also did it. He goes, I just want to do this thing. Apparently, just uh, Irvin Kirshner and, uh, and him knew about it. They actually talked about it because they didn't want to say this other thing because it was too committed to coming back. And stuff like that. So he had this uh, conversation. So basically what he orig- originally was going to say was when she goes, I love you. He goes, just remember that because I'll be back. 
and then they did that instead. But then uh, Carrie Fisher was pissed because she wasn't let in on the conversation that was planning ahead of right. time. And Lawrence Kasdan was pissed because it's like like because writers get pissed when you change their lines. Yes, so, they do. So give me my money. <laughs> He's a writer. Yeah, there it is. It's a trap. Uh, I like that. Actually, um, Jeremy Bullock right there is, uh, who was like, he was, um, Boba Fett, but he's also one of those stormtroopers cause the guy called in sick or whatever and couldn't be there. So he was there and he's like, oh, I'll put on the stormtroopers. Storm, storm, stormtroopers get sick too, man. They got a union. Do you think there's that many of them? There ain't a union. There's Money no, called it in with the emperor. There's no way there's a union. <laughs> If I guarantee no. It's like union negotiation negotiations. He's sitting there just That should be a God. skit we should do. The one guy that comes on is trying to get a union a done yeah. up between the uh in the Empire that there. Would be and the, uh, but sketch for just represented by anybody? For Star Wars sketches, I think nothing tops um Saturday Night Live's um Kylo Ren uh, undercover boss. <laughs> so they're on Star Killer Base <laughs> and he's like just wearing yeah. like the thing, hi, I'm Matt. <laughs> he's just like he's so good that look at how cool like the lighting and stuff in yeah, this is yeah. out of this yes world. it is i don't know what it did for oscars and stuff like that but it is out of this world this it does a, have a lot of good shots with cinematography up for oscars or anything that's what i'm saying i, I literally just said i don't know what it was nominated oh for, i thought for maybe oscar you just guy. meant like uh no I, I don't know i'm surprised that you don't know that that's I, one drink people yeah that's one drink there you go I just I I just didn't look it up. I was just couldn't be with with how much research there was. I just couldn't be bothered. Was, so Bob Anderson, the uh, legendary swordsman who did like he does all the choreography for these ones, but also did like the the old uh, Errol Flynn movies, and he did uh, the uh, Lord of the Rings sword fights and stuff like that. He's actually in the Darth Vader suit in these. So it's not David Prowse doing these. Right. And a lot of this, you'll notice that there's going to be a lot of like close-ups of just Mark Hamill during the scene. And it's because Bob, Bob Anderson had a hard time breathing. So they had to keep his ma- He kept the mask off for like lengths of time. See, I want to, I picture this is low button. In case there, okay. So wait, wait, before he pressed a bu- some buttons, yeah. Lando and this guy like, Ooh, like, yeah. is he controlling him? He's not controlling him, but he has a direct link to him. Ah. Like, it's not even like, I need to talk to you. Right. It's I'm He's sending like, stuff beep, beep, to your brain. That means, yeah. Like come and meet me yeah. over here. Whatever. I yeah. thought he was controlling him. No. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't. I, Oh god! I just picture how like drugged up she was. She was renting Eric Idle's house while they were shooting this movie. No and way! She had a and she had a big party. It was the day before they arrived at Cloud City. Like that, that scene where they come in, which is actually why they're a little more jumpy and happy in that scene. Like when they come off, you can see they're kind of in a better mood. Really? They had a big party. The Rolling Stones were there. What? Harrison Ford was there, and they found there was this these bottles of alcohol that were called Tunisian table scr- t- table cleaner. And I guess it was stuff that they, during Life of Brian, while they were, they shot that just prior to this, they were giving it to all the crew on Life of Brian as like a little like pick me up for people. And they were all drinking this stuff and getting fucking destroyed. (laughs) I love, uh, I want to just hear a whole, look at that freaking screener, eh? Yeah. I want to hear, there should be, there must be a book out where, of just the stories of her. Cause she is like a party animal. I love this woman. Yeah. She didn't take no shit either, man. She I'm, sounded wicked. She was the, uh, like... <clears throat> she got if, that from her mother. If, if only you could drop, like, the parts where she had to be addicted to drugs. She's, like, just, like, the perfect being. Oh, she's just, awesome. Like, no, she's, like... Who's I, her I'm, mom again? Um, fuck. Uh, Eddie Fisher was her dad, and I'm just... I can't, it's, her um, just lost me. Uh, son of a bitch. It's Shirley Temple. No. Shirley MacLaine. Shirley No. Yep. No, nope. Shirley McLean. Shirley McLean. Uh, uh, God, uh, her name just, I, I, I knew it this morning because I was doing stuff. She was a terrible mother too, apparently. Well, it's a, um, it was a, uh, it's a matter of what's it called? I like this hallway uh, that they, they right there. I don't know if we'll see it again now that he fell down the damn stairs. Yeah. Oh, nice little. Oh, it was Debbie Reynolds. Jump. Debbie Reynolds. There it is. Like, uh, damn it. I could like, I was doing research today and it said her name and I just totally forgot it. They had a pretty awful relationship, apparently. Yeah, in parts. She had, they actually, yeah. she, because she wrote that movie where they played themselves. Yeah, Postcards from the As, Edge. Yeah, there it is. And it's just so crazy that they can do that stuff. Um, so I'll go, I'll go through while they're doing this. So Lee Brackett's first draft had a ton 
of stuff that completely fucked up this movie. Um, so one thing is uh, Luke's uh, Luke is visited by the ghost of Anakin Skywalker, which means that he can't be Anakin right. Skywalker. And then he tells her about her sister, Nella Skywalker, who's actually somewhere else training as well. So he, she's basically going through the exact same story elsewhere. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, and then it was literally just all dropped because they, they had like, he had a better idea, you know, of like what they, uh, and what they end up doing, which is a million times better. Like what a like right. the, the twist in that. Ooh. Uh, well, the double twist really of uh, what they want to do as far as siblings and parents. And stuff right. Like that was way better. Did you, right. Just before here, Luke jumps out of the front, you know, the freezing chamber thing there, the old demolition yeah. man fucking freeze. Yep. Circle. Yeah. And he, he, he grabs onto the tubes. And then, and you know, like Darth Vader's like kind of in dad mode, yeah. right? real brief. He's like impressive. And yeah. then he kind of lazily swings at him. Luke just mm-hmm. pulls himself up by three more feet and he's like quite impressive. And I'm yeah. like, oh, he just had a little dad moment there yeah. where he's just beef, b- b- beefing his son up. Look at you. Look at my boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Well, you're doing pull ups. Yeah. Look at you. This thing coming up is actually <clears throat> the only stunt that Mark Hamill didn't do himself in this movie. Oh, he's like Tom Cruise. He's yeah. like the Star Wars well, Tom Cruise. Well, it's not like it. Like he's just he did his own fighting, and there's a couple of like jumps and stuff like that. Nothing major, right? The lightsaber seemed pretty so. weak there. Yeah, I don't know what it was. It was like the the Whoa. new ones. The new ones. The colors are just so much more brilliant. I love the use of. See, this is something that I really want them. This is why I want them to do the uh, the uh, old Republic. As like really, I want oh. Ryan, I want Ryan Johnson to make an old, a trilogy of the Old Republic because you would see the best Jedi at their bet. Like these are like guys. Qui Gon like, No, this is the Old Republic is a thousand years before any of this stuff, and it was like there were thousands of Jedi. Like there was a there shit were, ton of them. Was Jedi War, right? Yeah. And well, is that the, a video game? Oh my god! Later, Luke. Uh, it was a comic book that turned into a video game. Knights of the Old Republic. Knights of the Old Republic. Turned into the Old Republic video game. But Ooh. like, there's so much cool shit. If they told the Knights of the Old Republic the first movie or the first video game as a movie, it is a it is a stellar movie. Like you go to all these places and you're find you're trying to find uh like this ancient thing that like the first people to ever like discover technology built, which could basically help them build any technology they want and stuff it's like basically a mega power where you could use it to build like the most dangerous weapons in the world or you could use it to like you know build up the entire universe like for good and so you're basically they're in a race with this like main bad guy and stuff like this and then there's a huge reveal under the who the main bad guy actually is and like it's out of this world and it's the only star wars movie i would say cast vin diesel in because there's a large character who would who just has a very deep voice and the stuff. The D's? Yeah, I think that Vin Hell Diesel would do yeah. really well in that oh, movie. Oh, I was just about to ask where he was. There he is, smoking yeah. away. This a little actually, midget in there is having a butt right yeah, now. Kenny Baker, who's Kenny dead? Baker. He was electrocuted in that scene. But no, he just died. He also died in 2016, same as... Uh, well, he was actually Kenny electrocuted? Fisher. No, he wasn't electrocuted. Oh, I thought he that just, was another fact that just came out. He just died of being a, an old little person. Which he's is old. Does it matter that he was thing? little? Well, yeah, just because he was old. No, because like he, they little, age more. Well, no, it's because little people don't tend to get that old. Because right. Because the strain because on of their bodies. Their, yeah, exactly. On their little hearts. That's right. <laughs> I wouldn't be taking I'd be, well, I'd be backing up the, into the wall to give him a little face smack. Yeah, I think the problem is actually most of their organs are, nor, are like regular size because it's all like squished, squished in Squished in, yeah. I don't know the, all the physiology, forgive me, but... Uh, Oh, uh, good old storm. I like, there's some just so cool. Like Reese's favorite characters are the stormtroopers. Yeah. When he watches, he watches star Wars daily. Oh, well, I'm sure that must bother you. Uh, it's pretty bothersome. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, what's bothersome because you know that yeah. one day he's going to know more. No, my and biggest that fear moment, is he's not going to like it and call me a homo for enjoying it. When he gets to that age. Yeah. 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 He's like, I never liked Star Wars. Yeah. I lied. He'll be like, no. no. That'll be your no. He's like, I like Twilight. No. And I'm Team Jacob. No. <laughs> I'm a Star Trek guy. And even then, I'm pretty iffy on it. <laughs> I'm a Star Trek book guy, except for all that space bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that shot in Solo yeah. where it looks like a vortex is happening yeah. and all the ships are coming through it. Yeah. 
Oh, oh, fuck, hanging outside. You know, this I was going to say, like, look at all these rooms, man. Yeah. Like, on the inside of this whole circle, like, who the fuck? Yeah. I wonder if there's a real design for this thing, like a full-on design of how all the rooms connect and how everything connects into here and what's the point of it. And Probably. Not. Somebody probably did it, eh? I bet you somebody's done it recently, yeah. but nobody did it for the movie. Right, yeah, totally. It's I mean, it was like, a fan that did yeah. it, not the movie. It's like, you know, when those, uh, I can't remember, it was a, a school actually came up with how much it would cost to build the Death Star, and they did math on its dimensions and stuff and said, okay, if it was based on steel, then this is how much this would cost, and blah, 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 and then to, uh, this is what- Four would, billion. And then this is what would be required. No, it was- Exactly it, what it was, was paid to George Lucas for the franchise. It was in like, the, I think it was like the sextillions or Woo! something like that. It was like- I can see that, actually. The yeah. thing is huge. Yeah. Huge. Huge. It's like they built, like, Manhattan. Ooh. Yeah, you got a good hit. I forgot there you go. Well, you got one on him there. See, this is the, my only problem, Ooh. though, is that sometimes you can hit somebody with a lightsaber and it just, like, kits Ooh. them like that. But a lightsaber can literally cut through anything. So this oh, is... Oh, should have t- chopped off Buddy's hand there now. See, tit for tat, bro. I think this is still the all-time greatest twist in film. You think? I think it's, or at least the most memorable. I think the greatest twist ever was when Samuel Jackson was eaten by that shark in Deep Blue Sea, and you think he's the star. That was really good. Or executive decision. Yeah. That was, was, I just watched that. Yeah. That movie's fucking awesome. No, not yesterday. Day before yesterday. You fucking liar. Sorry. But yeah, so anyway, so David Prowse is given the line Obi Wan killed your father. And that was the big twist. But five people knew the real line, and that was. uh, so George Lucas, Irvin Kershner, Lawrence Kasdan, Mark Hamill, and James Earl Jones. The I am your Whoa, father. Whoa, could you imagine being in the theater back in the day? That would... Like, Whoa! See, I, I actually feel like I was cheated by No, we were because we already was, knew. Like, before yeah. we started, we were probably saying the I'm your father before we even saw the damn movies. Oh, probably. And right? then there was... Like, and, like, probably mm. your... You know, it's like your dad would be like, I am your fa- father. See that right there? Yeah. Every time I go to my dad's house, he reminds me that I'm he's my fucking dad. Yeah. I have the same reaction. Yeah. And then I attempt to chop my hand off. Mm-hmm. They actually, apparently in episode three, do an I am your father moment where they actually reveal, like it was deleted scenes or it was in the script but not shot, I don't remember. But uh, the Emperor tells Darth Vader that, because uh, you know how they talk about Darth Plagueis being able to like bring people back from the dead or mm-hmm. create life or whatever, mm-hmm. and that he didn't have a father. It was that he used, and it was always what was what people figured, oh. was that the Emperor used the power that Darth Plagueis had to make a baby that would be like the ultimate Sith. And so, so essentially he is the father, and he revealed it in... I think it was just in the script. I don't think they ever shot it. Right. Because I never saw like a deleted scene or something like that. But... And then you landed in that old sucky vent. Yeah, I know. That's I... not sucking anymore. Yeah, that's just a rad slide. Whoa. And then that has a weird vent that drops you off at the TV antenna. So th- does anybody yeah, still have see, rabbit ears? You think that really like Darth was like, oh. He's like, hey, I'm your dad. Why don't you join me? And then he's like, fuck you. And he jumps. He's probably like, oh. Yeah. Well, there's more friends that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And family. I should stop telling everybody I'm their father. <laughs> like, this shit, eh? You know what? That might be one of the. I'm going to think about this. This is a trivia question for people out there who've made it all the way. At the very least, at what's the, time, the greatest twist? Yeah. Is, is Star Wars Emperor Strikes Back, I Am Your Father, the best twist in cinema history? I, I think at the very least. It is the most memorable. Yeah. I think there are probably ones that were bigger surprises. And like, I like mean, Shawshank. Like even in, pitch, that was a big twist. Yeah. Like even in pitch, pitch perfect. Like, <laughs> no, it's no, I'm, I'm going to tell you, there wasn't a twist in pitch perfect, <laughs> but she points out the fact that she's oh. like, it was, she's like, yeah. in Star Wars, it was obvious. He's like, you honestly think that the greatest twist of all time was obvious. She's like, his name's Darth Vader. Vader is German for father. His name is literally Darth father. <laughs> it's not bad man it's not bad yeah right so yeah it was it was pretty good yeah i give i give uh pitch perfect more credit than uh than other people do but I I you're gonna see that perfect. amazing twist in pitch perfect yeah. when you find out that one of the girls is a plant and she's winning points for the other side the north korean singing team <laughs> it's just kim jong-un doing gangnam <laughs> <Yes>. style <laughs> riveting nice like the oh. logo in the background. I like Is that Cloud City logo? 
probably. I also like kind of the dichotomy of all the lighting too. Like they were in that weird red and then it's this pure white and then it goes to another dark and then it goes so boom, 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 hits you. I like that they're still using these old school antennas. That must have been back in the day before they switched over. Yeah, they didn't They still know. got them down there. And they're behind, so digital is not a thing. You yet. know what? It should, they should have had a scene just as he's falling where some dude and his wife are in the room. And he's like, this goddamn TV's gone out again. That would have been and then amazing. he lands on the antenna and then the channel comes in. <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> yeah. Two, <laughs> two alien guys or something, right? Yeah. This is some precision shit. Oh, it always is with these kind of things, yeah. right? See, and that's the thing. And this is my big problem because you'll see so many people, even people who like the movie, like, I'm going to pick it apart now <laughs> and we're going to do this. And I'm like, why? <laughs> just suspend a little bit of goddamn disbelief. Right. And I'm not just doing this to defend Star Wars, but just yeah, any anything. Movie. Lord of the Rings, anything. Yeah. It's like I'm writing this really grand, ridiculous thing. It's like, let's oh. start with, it's like, like let's do... Let's do Lord of the Rings. And they're like, oh, yeah, like like an elf would really be able to do that. Uh, let's start full stop with the why, like, there'd be an elf. Like, let's just relax and just enjoy yeah. the movie, right? Like, well, we, I mean, we do it all the time. Like, I'll see stuff in a movie and make fun of it, but I won't yeah. just because I. that's what I do. Yeah. I, I, I know. I think a lot of people think that about me too. Like, like I don't want to watch a watch this movie with you. What well, for one? If we're actually watching a movie in the theater, I don't say a fucking word. Yeah. But if we're sitting at home, I'm gonna talk shit about the movie, and they think I'm not enjoying it because I'm talking shit about it. When in fact, I've just seen the movie a million times, and it's fun. First question Carrie asked me when we watched Thanks Killing together. She's like, "Has Todd ever really seen a movie?" <laughs> And I'm like, why do you ask? And I knew why she asked, but I wanted to hear her say right, it. Right, right. And she's like, because right. he talked through the entire thing and then asked us what just happened over and over and over again. He's like, he's like, but he's like, blah, 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 blah. Why aren't they going to tell Yo. us how this happened? They literally just told us how this happened. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, oh, that movie was hard to follow. I know. Thanks killing. I know. You're but it talking was about just... twists. <laughs> it was just so funny. I'm like, that's just how we watch movies when we're having fun, right? <laughs> but yeah, I will. I will say, you go. To, you go to a movie with Todd. He will not talk. Maybe. Maybe. It's like the only ones we ever talked during were the ones where we had to make fun of. <laughs> like it was like, I and hear. like, and it would be the smallest thing, and it would be super quiet. It's not like we yell shit out or anything, but we would just be like Armageddon, and we just do that. I think the one that got us the most. Was was that one where like they were separated, uh, like Ben Affleck and uh, Dude, and he's like going back up. He's like, "I love you," and I went over and I was like, "I love you," and then you just started laughing at a bunch of teenage I totally girls got mad that at too. us. Oh again. hell yeah, man! Remember when people thought Michael Bay was talented? Oh my god! I just watched uh, the last night Star uh, Transformers. The oh. last night, it was the most unwatchable oh. garbage I've ever I, seen. I, and I, I just saw, saw some it. of it. What? I yeah. saw some of it as well. They played it. I don't know what channel it was in the States when I was in Baltimore, yeah. but it was on all day long and oh, I was right. having some drinks and I was like, you know what? Let me just put it on while I'm priming up here. Priming up. Oh, I get it. Hey, right. fucking yeah. right on. I like it. And uh, I was like, this is the worst mm -hmm. piece of trash. And you know what made me so upset about it was... I, I was given, like, I had really high hopes because they had just, after the last one came out, they got a bunch of, uh, they got a bunch of directors and producers together and stuff. They brought in all of the comics and all of the toys and they're like, let's get down to what people really like about Transformers. And like, we're going to tell the stories that they want to see. And then they're like, and yeah. they're like, Michael Bay's gone. We're doing a whole other thing. And it's all these guys and like good people, like, like good writers and like Akiva Goldsman and all these different people. And then out of nowhere, they're just like, they're like, Hey, what if we did one where it kind of took place during like medieval times and then like literally that was one of their pitches and then somebody else was hey what if we do I'm like what was the other chunk of uh, like what if we do one that takes place King on Arthur time and like well that's the medieval bit. yeah and like but they combined basically the two ideas that they had that had nothing to do with Transformers and then they did that weird thing with Anthony Hopkins I'm from the house of Witwicky oh my god and then and then they kind of like all of a sudden made it like Shia LaBeouf was like a secret society member when he was just like some stupid kid 
good. Like it was just. Yeah, this is like this is like so when lazy. you know, like still like back in the day when they're gonna make like a video game movie, but yeah. none of the people in the room has ever even seen the video game. Yeah, and they all talk like they know something. This is the whole thing, and it's like Jesus Christ. Michael Bay movies are notorious for like, tra- like, hey, take everything we love about the Ninja Turtles, throw it out the fucking window, yeah. and then make like, what are you doing? Wouldn't it be greater if they're middle middle aged and knew no martial yeah, arts? Yeah, and they didn't come. They're yeah. not. They came from outer space and all this yeah. shit. And it's like, what the fuck is wrong yeah. with you, dude? Yeah, and they were all Transformers. <clears throat> That's because his movies make a shit ton of money. Yeah. And so he thinks that he, they do huge. Know. They do huge. Even if it bombs here, they yeah. do huge numbers internationally. The last night made the least money out of any of them, and it made six hundred million dollars. Yeah, like so he can do whatever he wants because he's yep. like, well, obviously I'm making good movies. People are going to see them. And it's what's like, it called? Wasn't that bad though? Which, um, with the Rock, and it ha- it was uh, it was a true story about these guys working out at the gym and they robbed a guy. Yes. That was that, a good one. That was Michael Bay? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. He did it on purpose to show people that he could make like a movie under like a certain amount of money. Oh, well, then just fucking make a movie. Yeah. You're not like, it was. Now like, he's still going with Transformers because yep. John Cena is going to be in the Bumblebee. Oh, but Haley yeah. Steinfeld is in it. Like, oh my yeah. God. Oh, she's right. in Pitch Perfect as well, right? Uh, she's, yeah. Jesus, God, that woman is beautiful. I But I'm going to put it to you. Uh, I don't know if you remember my pitch for Transformers, what it could have been with uh, Shia LaBeouf still and stuff like that. No. Uh, okay, so I'll just do it, go over it really quick. But basically, to keep Shia LaBeouf interested, because you remember how Spike in the Transformers cartoon was in a wheelchair. Yes. His name was Spike, w- Spike Witwicky. Right. So I say give him that character. In episode, in the second movie, he gets his back broken trying to help Prime. He's now <clears> in a wheelchair. Now he's all bitter and like pissed about all this. And he's stuck with these people in this world because he's one of the people who knows about it. And he's like, we kind of like charged by the government with like being like their liaison, which kind of happens in the in a little bit in the third one. Uh, but he uh, so he's all mad about that. And they end up making him an exoskeleton like in the like in the cartoon that can transform. So then he kind of gets in on the action. The other side of that, the Transformers are now living in this big technological base out in the desert or whatever. Something happens I don't, I don't have this part, but it invites a lot, like more uh, Decepticons than you could possibly imagine. And then that's when you hear the big, <laughs> and the whole base starts to yeah. transform and he's Metroplex, yep. who's like the size of a building when it, when in like transform, not transform like mode. Like a skyscraper. Like he's, yeah, like he's like mountain top yeah, yeah. and just fighting off like, like. And then Buddy's like, got to show up, the big lizard guy. But, what, no, what I was thinking was that the Constructicons would be back in this one or something, some version of them so it would be all big and then this thing would be there and it would just like stomp oh on yeah it. like it would yeah be- the dinobots were in it too and optimus prime beats them all up in like five seconds and then rides them into battle and yeah. like just ugh. oh god i apologize because we literally just hey! aban- we literally just abandoned this movie right. to start talking about how bad transformers was that's how so, bad transformers is so that's pretty interesting though you see the credits there lee bracket and Lawrence kasdan were given the screenplay not one thing of lee brackets was used in the movie but he was so or she sorry was so respected as like a sci-fi writer that george lucas wanted her to have the credit and to honor because she just died and, and uh george lucas actually helped write the script and he gave himself just the story by so he does some interesting stuff and this movie because it was all done independently it made so much money he gave out five million dollars with the bonuses to the crew nice and stuff like that and i mean that doesn't sound like a ton except then you think 1980 and what five million yeah that would have been odd but still budget, anything well to give you an idea too the budget of this movie was 18 million oh my god so he looks like, like more than that man i know and so they don't make gave, him like this anymore exactly. baby but that would be like the equivalent of giving like 30 million yeah in, like now yeah that's pretty people. sweet Right. So, I mean, give it up and let's just give it up again. We didn't talk about him because I mean, we talk about him constantly. He's John Williams and his amazing friggin' how, scores. okay. Here, how did this movie get, I know independent movies, you know, you can get it into, how did he get it into theaters? If all the studios wanted nothing to do with this? Oh no. Guy? Well, again, like I, I never once said the studios didn't want it. The studios. Oh, all sorry, wanted. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. He didn't want to go through that he way. He, he got a studio to distribute it. He just didn't get a studio to produce to it. make it or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, um, yeah, he got like Fox is still the distributor at this point. He's got a rest- he's got a uh, thing with them. He just wasn't taking their money, essentially, right? So like it was the man had a vision. Yeah, exactly. Man, did he ever? And and like think of and this was like literally <clears throat> the turn point for him. So Skywalker Ranch is now built, which is now where 
most of this uh, special effects and audio mixing yep. in the world is done. Yeah. And Lucasfilm wow. now stretches like half. Out. Well, but I mean, think about think about that though as a number. Like it's like and it's still pretty good. And like good. even movies where like they weren't the most of it. It's like friggin' like Lucasfilm did stuff for the uh, for the Marvel. Yep. Movies. And they yep. do for like, even if it's not everything, it's always something. Yeah, we looked. It was a sound thing, right? Remember we yeah. were watching the Thor Ragnarok c- yeah. commercials and it was like Skywalker Sound Skywalker or something. Skywalker Sound yeah. did it, but then some of, and then uh, Black Panther, some of it was done at Lucasfilm. Yes. But there were like six or seven companies that were doing it because there was so much to cover. Um, Harley Cockless. Yes. <laughs> actually, <laughs> woo, well done. Uh, actually, that guy was, he worked on... Um, the Muppet Show with, um, and it's actually Cokeless. They spelt it wrong there, but uh, oh my god, I, I believe. But the uh, oh bummer, yeah, bummer, I, bro. Well, at least according to what I read, the one I read could have been spelt wrong too. So you never know. But the um, but yeah, he worked on the Muppet Show with um. Oh, there's Joe Johnston's name. He worked on the Muppet Show with um, Frank Oz, and he was visiting the set one day, and literally they basically came up to him. They're like, "We need another second unit director. You want to get started?" And he just started, like, he was hired on the spot for a job he wasn't there to try and get. You want to be the president of Texaco Oil? Pretty much, right? Yeah, okay. Can I still be the janitor? Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm mixing up the jerk with UHF. Yeah. Ooh, production assistant Jenny Osnowitz. That's Frank Oz's probably daughter. I don't know. Osnowitz? Osnowitz. That's Frank Oz's yeah. actual last name. So. Oh, I was being like, what? Like, yeah. Fry's Engineering. Good old Fry's. Yeah. Uh, okay, you know what? So my character was not in here. Yeah, so, so I, I think that if I was going to go as somebody from this one, I'd go as one of those Cobra Commander dudes. Yeah, in the oh, white. The, uh, the snow troopers. The, the snow troopers. Yeah. There's a lot of... That's the thing. The cool thing about... You could have an entire Comic-Con with every person being a different character. I dug those dudes in the background of the fight scene in Snoke's... Uh, Throne room there. Those yes. dudes standing in the background. Those guys were wicked looking. There was a lot of confusion because some people thought that those were the Knights of Ren. And they're not. Those guys right. still haven't been in the movie. And they're supposed to be, like, they're all supposed the to be as badass ass dudes, right? Ren. They are the Jedi that were being trained by Luke and they all left. Oh. And so everybody thought, like, because these guys all had kind of lightsaber-y weapons right. and stuff like that. Lightsaber-esque so, Yeah, like all weapons. En- energy weapons. Um, I saw they showed a deleted scene from The Last Jedi that they just put online just so you could see a little something that's like a selling point for the Blu-ray that's coming out uh, next week as we record this. Uh, it will already have come out by the time this episode is out. But the uh, it was the way that um, Phasma dies originally. It was like an alternate scene where Finn reveals that she's the one who uh, took down the... Uh, the um, Star Killer base shield. Right. He's like I put my gun to your head and you just took down the shield. And then he's like, "How do you think you, your troopers will, uh, feel about that?" And they all look at her. We should call that number. Phone T. Yeah, one eight hundred. We should phone totally THX. call it and see what it says. It's probably George Lucas's phone. He's just hello. <laughs> Whoops. Well, okay. Okay. Anyways, right. But anyways, so then she ends up killing all the stormtroopers and then like t- and then takes him down and he's down and then they do that you you scum and he's like rebel scum and then blows her away and she goes flying over. Right. Her. So it was like it's just an alternate version of the yeah. thing, but it was like it was just they re- they reveal that she's the one who did it. Um. So that I is- am going to call that number. <laughs> What was it? One eight hundred call THX. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. One eight zero zero C A, which is the same one. L L. So one eight hundred two two five five eight T four nine. Here we go. One eight hundred two two five five eight four nine. Everybody call at the same time because we're going live. Here we go. <laughs> Put it on speaker. How do we do that? I don't, you don't know, you gotta know how to use your fucking phone, man. I don't know. Hey, my no, phone no. doesn't know how to use me. Now, oh, now we should be able to hear. Okay, let's find Here we go. Oh, that was my ankle crack. Hi, you've got George Lucas. I don't know if it's supposed to be. I'm not sure this is it. 
That would be amazing. Maybe it's some old derelict answering machine that you still press the buttons on. So, like, yeah. he's in there crying because they don't want him to have anything to do with Star Wars and he can hear it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, when somebody's like, it's over, Joe, and you have <laughs> company and you're like, everybody just heard that. Okay. Well, I don't think anybody's going to answer. Shh, but we'll, we'll keep 85 it. more rings. Okay. And then we'll know. Well, I'll, get, I'll do the rundown of okay. all the stuff already. Okay. Doing this. So, uh, go to our website, miscastcommentary.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Miscast Podcast. I'm at JK Finley. Todd is at Miscast Todd. Instagram, we're at Miscast Commentary. Again, like our email and stuff, you can do all that through the website, but it's podcast at miscastcommentary.com. Uh, make sure to go to our YouTube page. We've got lots of behind the scenes things, and uh, we're doing some other sketches and things like that. You can find it all. Uh, there's going to be a link to because we're going to do a different channel for our. Uh, are just our sketches that aren't related directly to the show, and that's called Miscast TV. You'll find that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, come out there and find us. Okay. Oh wait. Uh, no, 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 no it's still, 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 still ringing. I thought that was the voice of Zukus. Oh. oh, we got hung up on. I thought that some robot answered the phone, and its voice sounds like a phone ringing. That would have been amazing. Maybe he was talking to us the whole time, right there. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Lucas, uh, come on. Let's try it again. What a fucking waste. You think that that landline phone's going to do it? I don't know. 1-800-PHONE-THX. Here we go. Come on, Georgie oh, baby. Oh, was THX, wasn't it? What did you just type in? I call THX. <laughs> maybe, that's that's the, maybe that's it. No, it's 1-800-THEN-CALL-THX in I'm, number four. I'm checking back. You're going back? Okay, I'm maybe, maybe, back maybe I took the wrong thing in. Here we go. That's what I'm concerned now. Oh, we're starting again. Yeah, we're starting. We're starting her over just to find the end here. Okay, here we uh, go. Industrial Light Man, Nathan Kennedy. There's Mr. Cockless. Here we go. If you experience any conditions that detracted from the theatrical presentation of this film, please call 1-800-PHONE-THX. Okay, here we go. I can tell you exactly what the number is. <clears throat> here we go, Lukey baby. Come on. the number that is not available from your calling area why did you call the same one i did 1-800 wait wait a second 746 i had 1-800-225-5849 yeah that see and that was call thx and this says phone THX. oh phone that's why so, and oh, i just did man. phone THX. okay so that was a big miserable failure oh. i was actually gonna say because it was a could audio condition that detracted from the thing, I was just gonna say when the answering machine came up, yeah, you know, these two fucking assholes were talking through the entire movie. <laughs> they ruined the whole goddamn thing. All right, but um, yeah, so that's it for this one. Uh, happy May the Fourth, everybody. Uh, Wouldn't that have been awesome if Lucas or something, or even an answering machine if George Lucas came on? Yeah. Fuck. Uh, we'll add that in digitally later hi everybody (laughs) all right uh thank you guys all so much for listening uh we'll do another one next year i'd like to do more but it's like i feel like we've kind of got a thing now what do you mean it's like i like i'd like to do them a little more frequently oh no 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 no. it's just it gives me something to look forward to next year and in between all this other shit yeah exactly all the other one uh, all the other ones are just countdowns to do in the yeah pretty much all right guys uh we'll see you next week We'll actually have a mini episode next week and then we'll go uh, kind of back to regular schedule from that point. So we'll see you then. See ya. This has been Miscast Commentary with your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Executive producer, Joe Finley. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Visit www.miscastcommentary.com for all news related to the podcast. Miscast Commentary is a Miscast Media Production.